Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Lloyd Nick is fast to Red Phillips. is good for the touchdown. The 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Tucker Fredrickson. Solomon to throw, straight back in the pocket. Throws it for Beasley. He's got it in the open. At the 20. Touchdown, Auburn. It is not. Brought to you by the Colonial Company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. This is the off week. The Tigers have had uh, the weekend off, a chance to uh, recoup, rest up, I guess, Coach. You've had a week to, to absorb things and to think about uh, your team's performance. What do you think from last week? Well, I don't know. I don't think our players would think we were trying to recuperate the way we've been working this week. <laughs> <Is there? laughs> no, we've, uh, we took Monday off and just lifted weights and watched film, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we um, went out in pads and worked on fundamentals and the basics and I think got better as a football team. Um, I think we've made some progress this week. I know defensively that uh, we're right now I think the better football team than we were when we played uh, TCU. I think we made some progress offensively too because we got an awful lot of repetition in this week on our just our basic offense and I'm very pleased with the way the offense worked uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Friday and Saturday we went back to a lighter type workout and I thought we kind of got back in a, a rut and didn't get any better and just kind of trying to look like they were making it just a work day instead of going out and having a little enthusiasm and approaching it with, you know, with a good mental attitude and and uh, and really getting improving. I, I just, uh, we're not getting 100 percent what we want on the practice field offensively and, uh, you know, on the defensive side of the field. And, of course, I'm watching both practices going on. The defense is hollering and jumping around and having a good time at practice and, uh, it makes it it makes it so much easier offensively. It's all I hear over there is coaches hollering at players trying to get them to go full speed and and uh, go a little harder and work a little harder and instead of uh, the players pushing themselves, uh, you know, and, and encouraging each other and and pulling together as a team and and uh, we you know and we we're, we're not getting that on the offensive field. Uh, the offensive players by nature are different than defensive players. I realize that they're they're quieter. Uh, our offensive line has got some outstanding football players in it, Keith Euchre, and and uh, offensive tackles are you know a big, strong, strapping men, but and they're they're not hollow guys, uh, I, you know. And our other other people offensively are, are quiet; and they don't say much. And I don't know. I just you know I worry about them. Only guy over there on the offensive field that looks like to me is trying to be a football player on every down is, is Lionel James, and he's the littlest one out there. But you look over there, and he'll catch your eye every time the ball snapped as he, if he's lined up over there. And uh, I guess if Lionel wasn't going so hard, it wouldn't make the rest of them look so bad. He'd be the same speed. But if we could get them all practicing the way he practiced, then, you know, we'd have what we want. And uh, until we get that, you know, I'm not going to be satisfied, and the players are going to, uh, they're going to hear from me and the coaches on the field. And if we get that, then we're going to be a respectable offensive football team. Until we get that, we're not going to be respectable, I don't think. Okay, Coach, in this off week now, we will take a look at the highlights of the opening game victory. And also later in the program, we'll take a look at next week's Saturday night opponent at Jordan-Hare Stadium, uh, Wake Forest. And we'll be back to do that in just a minute after this word from the Colonial Company. A week ago, Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn took a hard-fought victory over TCU, 24-16. Great kick coverage, Coach. Well, this is probably the highlight of our football game against TCU was our kicking game. And, uh, of course, that's a mistake on the first play, first series that we had it and gave them the ball on our 18-yard line. And our defense holds them and forces a field goal right here. And they go up 3-0 in the game. And uh, But our kick, kicking game was, I thought, exceptional because in the spring we were we more concerned about it. Here's a, uh, just a play-action pass off of our option action and, and um, big uh, touchdown by the big fullback, Ron O'Neill. The, the touchdown pass that you saw, the long pass that you saw, was off of our option action and uh, that defensive secondary just was playing the run, should have been playing the pass. You can see a blitz right there by front, a good pass rush, and outstanding play right there by Danny Skutak. And our front 
four in the second half really got a lot of pressure on that quarterback. And you don't always have to get to the quarterback to, to create problems for him. There's a block punt by freshman David King from down in Fairhope. How Alabama. often does the block punt lead to a score? Well, it did here, and it, it, it just is a great uh, thing. Isn't that some fine catch right mm -hmm. there by Mike Edwards? And just uh, Mike is really a fine football player, and I think one of the best players we've got right now on offense. Had a fine run right there by Ron O'Neill for the touchdown. That was, a, that was a predetermined play right there. We just handed it off to him, and he made the big play. Here's a, one of the mistakes in the game. We have reaching and grabbing instead of putting that shoulder pad on him right there, and another one right here where we just you don't leave your feet when you're tackling. You run through people, and we didn't have that, and that guy right there, we can't catch him. Nobody on our football team can run as fast as him with the possible exception of Clayton Buford. You might catch him. We come... In the game, that made it 14 to 10, that long run. We come right back and give them the ball. But uh, we have a series of downs here where our defense rises to the occasion and great pressure right there by Donnie Humphrey and a great lick by Quincy Williams. And they got the ball on the 28 and ended up punting from our 40. Again, you can see pressure coming right here from Donnie Humphrey and, and uh, Scott Riley comes in to make the initial hit, and then Donnie gets there, and then Edmund Nelson, and then Dow Altman, and they end up with all four of them on the quarterback, and that's what you want. It makes it. That was the play following uh, Quincy's play, too. I well, that Can't makes life him. miserable. Here's a read play, and the big fullback, uh, Charlie Thomas, does a great job of reading it, and, and uh, super move right there by Ron O'Neill, and takes it down to the six yard line and the next play is they failed to line up on our wide out and quarterback sees it. Charlie Thomas does a great job of recognizing this and just throws the ball out for the easy touchdown. Chris was probably afraid to holler, afraid they'd well, see we, him he, he, he waves his hand. He doesn't holler because that would attract attention from the, from the other team. So. Stamp is, Stamp is an outstanding quarterback throwing the football, and here's that touchdown run from the 13-yard line, and they uh, they caught us in a blitz situation and, and hurt us. They're within four now. It's some kind of ball game. And knocking again here. Well, we come back and have fine plays right there by Edmund Nelson and Donnie Humphrey, both of them. Here's a great play right here on the safety blitz. That's Skutak back there around him. I think hits him, and... Big Ben Thomas and Donnie Humphrey makes an interception, and, but it was a big, big play for us. Our defense did a great job of uh, mixing up the defenses, and coaches did. There's a fumble, and Danny Skutek comes up with the, with the loose ball, and if you're playing hard, you're going to get most of those fumbles because you always got somebody going to the football or going around it, and we turn around and give it right back to them, which is not recommended. Had an opportunity to put the game away right there and, and didn't do it. But the defense is still playing strong in the game, and you can see there's four people on the tackle and six there waiting for them to, to get away. Here's a great play run right here by Lionel James, the tailway jersey. He steps out of it just to have a 35 yard run down the sideline. I think, it, I think we got better this week at the execution of our options. We just got an awful lot of repetition. And of course, we've been working so many quarterbacks that uh, quarterbacks been, you know, just being fair with them. They haven't had the repetition that they need and the looks that they need, but we have gotten a lot more. Al Del Greco made it an eight point lead now, but they're still trying to come back you know, and tie the game at least. I believe that's Quincy Williams coming in for another fine hit. Here's a good play right here by Danny Skutak and Scott Riley, forcing the fumble. Bob Harris going hard to the football, comes up with the recovery at the 20-yard line and stopped another scoring threat by TCU. This is a well-covered play right here, but we just we weren't quite aggressive enough going for the football, and you got to come up with those kind and gave him the ball on our 30-yard line. Next play right here, the same guy makes a great interception, and this is an interception. He comes down in the end zone. Uh, Darrell Wilkes, super play, and it was all the difference in the world in the way he went after that ball and the way he you know, that he played the one before that. Last chance now, fourth down for them. This They're is the fourth. In. This is the fourth quarter. That's the last play of the game, as a matter of fact, for, for our defense. And and um, 
you could see that our front four was still playing hard and you know getting pressure on the quarterback and point in time in the game where you know that you, that's where you're supposed to be playing and um, it's encouraging that's right that's, that's exactly right and um, I think that uh, we certainly learned a lot about our football team in, in this game and I think our players learned a lot about themselves and and I hope that uh, and I hope we're going to be a better football team execute better and still play with the same intensity and, and uh, just have a you know overall improvement when we play Wake Forest. I think we've got to be. I don't think there's any question that Wake Forest is a better football team than TCU. Uh, they throw the ball the same way and they've got where TCU who we felt like had one great receiver. Wake Forest has got two plus their tight ends catch the ball very effectively where we'll TCU see. didn't throw to that tight end much. We'll see them in a minute. Right now, Coach, let's meet your coaching staff. Well, our coaching staff is, I think, has done a great job. As Larry Blakeman played at Auburn, and coaches are split ends, and uh, Larry's just a super young man. His wife Sue, and Auburn people. As Wayne Boat, the coaches are tight end. Wayne played for me at East Carolina, and Throws I think good I think he's a I think he's an outstanding football coach. Neil Callaway, coaches the offensive line. Coach Callaway. Came on our staff in 1978, I guess, and been with us ever since. Bud Casey coaches our offensive backs. Coach Casey is He's a trench coach. Uh, well, he coach. is. He does a great job. He's a great on the field coach and a lot of enthusiasm. Coach Daniels, James Daniel, that uh, was an outstanding high school coach down in Enterprise, Alabama. He's got eight or ten kids playing in the Southeastern Conference now that he coached. As Coach Alex Gibbs. Coaches our quarterbacks, offensive coordinator. Coach Wayne Hall coaches our defensive line. And I think Wayne's done an outstanding job with our defensive line. He has played hard and well coached. Bobby Wallace coaches our secondary. Bobby's just, I think, done a tremendous job with our kids back in the secondary. They're probably doing a lot more than they've ever done before as far as coverage is concerned. And he's a, Bobby has a lot of enthusiasm and great teacher. Joe Whit coaches our defensive ends. Was Joe coach right here in Lee High School in Montgomery, and Joe has done a great job with our defensive ends. Frank Orwell coaches the linebackers and our defensive coordinator, and Frank has been on our staff for a long time. As Coach Virgil Knight, our strength coach, and uh, his men are already men are great deal to our football team just as far as the weight training is concerned and conditioning. Jim Hay is, a, is our volunteer coach and, and does a great job. Here's some of our student assistants that um, played at Auburn and still undergraduates. There's Tim Stowers that uh, played at Auburn as a part-time coach now and just our young coach has done a great job with our JVs and scout team and I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. The only problem we have is when I don't do a good job in planning and preparation. The coaches have done everything I've asked them to do, and when we haven't done well, it's because I haven't asked enough of them. We'll be back in just a minute to take a look at uh, the uh, campus of Auburn University. A special university feature today. Here is President Dr. Hanley Funderburg of Auburn University. I want to thank Coach Pat Dye and the sponsors of this program for giving me a few minutes to talk about Auburn University. We're getting ready to start a new year at Auburn. Of course, for this campus, it's the 126th year, and for our Montgomery campus, uh, we're starting the second decade. We expect about the same number of students on both campuses, about 18,600 here at, at Auburn and about 5,000 at Montgomery. Of course, the last few years have been rather difficult years for us, primarily because of the economy, and uh, this mean, has meant uh, less funds for all of education and uh, certainly less funds for Auburn. During the past three years, we received about a 10% increase, and during that same time, uh, we've experienced about 30% uh, inflation. Uh, of course, uh, we've had to do more with less during this period of time, and our faculty have responded well. Our staff have responded well, and we appreciate the fine help and assistance they've given us during this period of time. You've heard a lot recently about our School of Engineering. It's a fast-growing school. We've turned out a lot of 
engineers. Over the past years, we have facilities that are well-worn. We have equipment that is well-used and somewhat out of date. And our facilities are built to take care of around 3,000 students, and we will enroll probably about 4,000 this fall. It's imperative that we expand these facilities and improve the equipment that we are using in our laboratories in the area of engineering. We are working on this matter at this time, and we have a plan which will enable us to improve our situation tremendously during the next couple of years. You've also heard a lot recently about our School of Veterinary Medicine. We have some deficiencies in our School of Veterinary Medicine, but we also have a plan which will enable us to correct those deficiencies. One of the things that we will do next fall is to decrease the enrollment from 115 to 100. And we also uh, have a plan to raise money to improve the equipment in this particular area. So these two schools are accredited, they will be accredited, and we will improve uh, both of these schools in the coming months. In addition to our large instructional program at Auburn, we have a very extensive research program. We've had this for a number of years, and we hope to improve this particular part of our mission. It's needed for the development of our state. We also have a large cooperative extension program, and statewide we serve over 350,000 people every year. What we do at Auburn affects the quality of life for every citizen of this state. Wiser applications of science and technology, greater access to the arts and enriched cultural understanding, better health care, greater agricultural productivity, more effective schools, and more efficient business and industry. These are the contributions that Auburn is making to you and your children. Well, University. Well, I tell you, I, I, uh, that was interesting. Uh, uh, I was certainly glad that Dr. Funderburg would share those things with us and, you know, the people watching our show. You guys had a job, uh, Well, I th you know, I, I, I feel very strong about, a, you know, our whole entire university being a family affair. Our student body, our faculty, our fans, our players, our team. We just uh, the football team is just a small part of a of a university. When you take in consideration that we've got 18,600 students, and we have a 125 football players, and we're just a small part of it, uh, the circumstances surrounding football make it a very visual part of the university, and that's why that I feel like it that uh, you know everything that we do needs to be first class and and. Uh, bring a uh, good impression back to Auburn uh, based on the way the football team plays, the way it handles itself, the players in public on the campus and the community, out of town trips and everything that we do, you know, I, I think it is important for our football team to, and the coaches and the people representing the, the university to, to um, be class people. No and, question and, about it, Coach. And, and we will be. No question about it. Okay. I'm going to put you to work a little bit. Talk about the Auburn offense, which is the wishbone offense. Uh, you, your interpretation well, of it so a, the this is understand. A, this is a, uh, actually a critical play we're running right here. It's a read play, and Charlie Thomas, our quarterback, does a great job of reading the end there and handing the ball off to, to Ron O'Neill, and he makes a 34-yard run. They have a missed tackle there. He does a great job of stepping out of the tackle. But uh, the offensive line came off the ball real well. Here's a predetermined play on the goal line, and they get penetration upfield, and Charlie does another great job of not pitching the football here because of a possible fumble that you can see him fake the pitch and turn upfield. And I thought he got in the end zone, but, you know, he, he had to think quick, or he, if he'd have made that pitch like he was, the play was designed for him to make it, then he could have taken a, a bad play. Right here, Joe Sullivan. Now, this play is successful, but Joe actually misread the play. And, and not that not that it didn't turn out good because it did, but the play probably it should have been handed off to the fullback. But that's the nature of the wishbone offense is to force defenses to make mistakes. And we looked at this play earlier. This is just a simple pass off a of play action where we're forcing the secondary to to contain and 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 uh, throw the foot and we throw the football where the people in the secondary 
are leaving to, to support the run. Mm -hmm. Here we can see our nickel defense uh, field against uh, a passing team. We've got uh, five defensive backs in the game, four linemen rushing, and we're actually playing five underneath man here with a two deep, and they actually complete the pass, make a first down there. We're coming with, with some blitzes here. You can see our strong safety at the top of the screen there, and, and uh, we come on and, and force a, a sack on the quarterback. And Bob Harris, our strong safety, is really the key to, to our blitzing most of the time because he is, we're coming again with a blitz right here, I believe. Yeah, and you can see him coming from the backside, and, and they do a good job of running away from our blitz. And uh, we're here we're disguising the blitz. You can see our folks getting right up on the line of scrimmage. Actually, this time we're coming, but the quarterback is confused, and he actually ends up having to call timeout. See him call timeout? Now we come right back on the next play. He goes over the side, and we disguise the blitz, come out of it, and we actually end up with a, with a minimum rush, and the quarterback, again, is confused, and he has to dump the ball off to the tight end, and that's when Quincy Williams got his big hit on, the, on, the, on their tight end. Quincy hurt, Quincy hurt himself a little bit. He hit it so hard, but he's all right. And Boy, it was a big play. It was a big psychological Well, boost, the next it? play, we sacked a quarterback, and that's when we came in there, and they had the ball at, our, I think, our 28-yard line, and ended up punting from the 48. I believe they call that defense, don't they, Coach? Well, that's the way it's supposed to be played. Okay. Uh, Sewell Hall is the place where the Auburn athletes live. It is a special place. It is intended to be such. And we'd like to introduce you to a couple of people who play a vital part in the running of Roy B. Sewell Hall. You want the athlete to uh, live here at Sewell the way he lives at home in the family setting, huh? Exactly. Uh, it's my home and it's their home and uh, we want them to feel that it's uh, a livable home. Now, the athlete's academic uh, affairs and uh, any problems that might arise, who handles that? Pat Waters. He was a professor in English and was hired on as an academic advisor. So he monitors their performance in the classroom and helps them out when, when necessary? Exactly, and, and also he knows what they're doing through uh, personal contact with their professors and uh, their grades at the end of the quarter. I, I just feel that we try to make it more home-like and we try to be their, like their mother away from home, I guess. Your meals, their plan and so forth for the athlete who's uh, expending a lot of energy every day, I guess. They can put away 6,000 calories and I think one time we added up that they were drinking like 90 gallons of liquid a day and they go back out and use up all these calories and so we just try to have a high protein, high carbohydrate, high calorie meal with lots of fruits and vegetables. Southern seasoning, I, I think, too, huh? Right, right. We, we try to keep it. It's, it's very southern. And it's good. I can attest to that. <laughs> I tell you, Ms. Graves does a great job. Uh, Phil, we are honoring uh, Brownie Fanoa and the, the White Forest game. Brownie, of course, uh, lived in the dormitory for many years, and he and his wife, Merle, are just, uh, just great Auburn people. And uh, he retired this summer, and Rusty took his place. And, but we're looking forward to honoring Brownie this coming Saturday night. Okay, now we'll be back to talk briefly about next week's opponent, night game at Auburn, after we pause for this. Auburn's first ever night game at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Wake Forest is the opponent and another thrower, Coach. Well, uh, they throw the ball a lot, and they use a lot more formations in, than TCU. They shift in motion and use three wideouts to one side. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, they're a good football team. We'll take a look at uh, their quarterback, who... Uh, is a really fine thrower, and they just put people all over the field. Well, you know, they've got two great receivers in, in uh, right Bumgardner Bum and Duckett, and they throw a lot more to their tight end and, and uh, backs than, than TCU did. Mm -hmm. So um, they'll be able to move the football. They moved the football quite well against South Carolina. They moved it last night, scored th uh, 23 points against North Carolina State, and um, it'll be an exciting football game. I hope that we can have a big crowd and the students are getting back on campus now and we're just really excited about the, about the weekend. There will be tickets available. You need to get them this week and let's have a big Saturday night crowd at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Thank you, Coach. Good luck to you and the team. Thank you.
Football Review with Coach Pat Dye has been brought to you by the Colonial Company. Ten percent, and just barely was getting to him. Yeah. I just don't know. We just, you know, we just didn't take care of football properly and cost us the ball game. Well, we we just got to regroup and uh, go back at it next week. We got a real tough one with Tennessee. Men, when you play. One guy doesn't lose a game. One guy doesn't win a game. We play as a team. We win as a team. We lose as a team. I'll take all the blame for the mistakes. I'll take all the blame for that. But the big thing is that you guys stick together. Don't let anybody pick on you. Or on the Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Boy, Nick, his pass to Red Phillips is good for the touchdown. The 10 to the 5, touchdown, Tucker Fredrickson. Solomon to throw, straight back in the pocket, throws it for Beasley. He's got it in the open at the 20. Touchdown, Auburn. It is blocked. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. First night game in Auburn football history at Jordan-Hare on Saturday night. Great night for football. Everything great, but the final score, Coach, 24-21, Wake Forest. Well, Phil, it was, a, it was a beautiful night, and we had a good crowd, and our people were enthusiastic, and we just didn't do what was necessary on the part of our football team. It was a, a hard-fought game on both sides of the field. Wake Forest football team and the coaches deserve all the credit in the world for a great job of preparation and doing what they had to do to win the football game. And uh, they get all the glory and things that go with winning. And we come away empty-handed. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for losing, and uh, we're going to look at the game and the film and study it and try to improve from it. I think that um, I think our players played hard. I don't think there's any question about that, but uh, we didn't play good. We didn't play good in our first ball game. We didn't play good last night. When I say good, I'm talking about the little things that make a difference in winning and losing. Um, it's five things that uh, really determine the outcome of a game, and uh, we didn't uh, win any of the five categories. And if you start with penalties in the game, we got more penalties than Wake Forest did. Turnovers, we turned it over three times, they turned it over twice. Uh, critical situations, third down, clutch downs, uh, they came up with a big play, we didn't. Uh, they won in the fourth quarter. We had a chance to win in the fourth quarter and didn't. And uh, the kicking game, they won the kicking game. We, we, uh, I thought Alan Bowling had another outstanding night uh, punting the football, but outside of that, I don't think we won any phase of the kicking game. They, they, uh, they had one long punt return, and uh, we turned the ball over on a kickoff, and uh, we don't kick the ball off like we have been. And so they won every, every all five categories that we try to uh, try to win and and that really determined the game. Uh, defensively, we didn't come up with a, with a big play when we had to have it, and uh, we played hard defensively. I thought we hit good. We didn't tackle very good. Uh, offensively, in the first half, we didn't get the ball but five times. They, they did a great job of controlling the football with the passing game, which is, is kind of unusual. Um, but we had a lot to do with that, too. Uh, Offensively, we had the ball five times in the first half. We scored two touchdowns. They stopped us one time, and we stopped ourselves twice. And um, 
it's just kind of like that all night long, and, and we didn't have enough to win when it counted in, in the late stages of the game. Okay, we'll take a look in just a minute after this word from our sponsor. Win or lose, Coach, uh, Jordan Hare was a fine place to be last night. I like nighttime football. Later. Well, I think everybody there enjoyed the football game except the outcome of it. There was a lot of enthusiasm in, in the stands, and fans did a great job helping us for the momentum and times in the game. We kick off to them and hold them. I think they make a first down here, and we end up holding them and, and getting the ball and, and uh, decent field position. Good hit right there. Ronnie Ballou, I thought, made some great hits last night and just uh, played real fine. You know, they they did a great job of protecting the pass, so we did get him rushing, run him out of the pocket two or three times. That was a missed tackle. That, you know, that three or four yards right there helps make a first down. And he just got to got to break down and, and get in the middle of people here, pressure Four. on the quarterback again, and we we, we come up with a with a big play in third down situation and force him to punt the football and we get it back. First time we had the ball, we we make eight yards on the sweep. It's I don't believe it's in here, but we line up five men in the backfield and, and uh, so this is actually our second possession here and and. This is the first long touchdown run by Ron O'Neill. Well, Back and truck. Let's well, see it again. He breaks a tackle right there at the line of scrimmage. Nobody's going to arm tackle him, and you can see those guys right there that you know, he's got pretty good lead him kind of, you know, I guess they think they're going to run him down, but Ron has got good speed, and he's big and strong, and, and we just need to do some more things with our attack besides have the ability to get the football to him. I thought this would hurt him later on, him taking punishment like that, but they have two good quarterbacks. Well, the other kid came in, and Weber came in and did a good job for him. That was tackled by Greg Carr. They they threw that, what we call a Cadillac route, with the tight end crossing and the split end circling deep over the middle. They threw it over and over again. There it is right there, the same, same route. They hit the tight end one time, and the split in the next time and we worked on it a thousand times but it didn't seem to do us any good last night they just did a great job of executing it mark dormity making his first start they threw came back and mark did play the play the thing well here and intercepted the pass on the goal line and get it back out to around the seven or eight yard line that's the only interception we had in the game and that's blocking below the waist and and you can't block below the waist on a on a sudden change or turn a turnover like that it's just like a kicking down and we get backed up a little more. As Dow Altman making a play along with Jeff Jackson. They have field position all through this. You see, we're getting around him right here, and, and Donnie Humphrey actually gets his hands on him. Dow Altman comes up with a sack. Okay, now we move into the second quarter with uh, with the football. At times, we you know we did some things good, but we just it wasn't a continuous thing throughout the football game, and, and you know they came up with a big play and. And we didn't come up with enough big plays defensively or offensively. As Charlie Thomas running the option, his Ken Hobby in at quarterback, it's on the post right to Chris Woods and overthrow him. Second and ten now at the 22, we're down deep. We find run by George Peoples. We move George to fullback. They get a face mask penalty here. Moves the ball on out around us. Midfield. Charlie comes back and hits Chris Wood on a simple little stop route. We would have liked to throw the ball more last night, but we just didn't, we really didn't have the ball enough to, to establish our offense like we would have liked to have. Big play coming here, third and this one. This is the same play that Ron O'Neill scored on, and, and George hits the same place, the same seam, and breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage and goes 40, 50 yards for a touchdown. Willie Howell making the block right there. Come back and see it on on replay. Break the tackle right there. Well, they really walled him off well. It's, uh, we've gotten a lot of mileage out of that play, and it, it's a good play for us, and probably should run it more than we do. So it's 14 nothing. Things looking good. The inside game is working and, and everything. Well, we just uh, we come back before the half, and you'll see it here that uh, we take them down. We have a fine goal line stand. They don't get any points on the board. Then they come back and, and we turn the ball over on the 18-yard line after their field goal and with 33 seconds left and they get a touchdown out of it. 
Again, you can see how people going to the football is not a matter of, of effort. What happened last night, it was just that's poor tackling right there. But it was, we had people flying around trying to get to the football. It's just a, a matter of them executing and us not being in the right places. They had a great lick right there by Ronnie Belue. So we get to see that one again. And, and of course, that, that's the kind of play that turns football games around. We've got to have more than one a game like that. They just uh, throw to everybody. They send well, everybody. Well, I, th I, I was looking at that as a, a great play. We had the blitz on. The quarterback does a super job of reading the blitz and dumping the ball off to the tight end. That's just good execution on that part. Come back and throw to the fullback out. Uh, this is a, a screen behind the line of scrimmage. And uh, pick up four or five yards with this it. This is the goal line stand. Goal Four line plays stand. inside. Fine play right here by Dennis Kutak in the sweep. They line up the trip formation. Just pitch the ball to the remaining back in the backfield. Come back. And Third down. Throw to him. I believe they pick up a first down here. And it's a fourth and goal now at the one. They, 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 they started at the six. There's a sweep. You're going to see a lot of people around the football. They're trying to get there. And, and they hold him up. No points. We don't move the football here. Field position was and, uh, bad we this have whole quarter. To, right, we have to punt the ball again. And they, they get a nice punt return right here. We don't break down right here. You see a missed tackle right there. Another one there. And, and they get the ball out on about a 30-yard punt return and, and really gave them great field position. And they take this one down and kick a field goal and make it 14-3. to three. This is a third down it's play still, in the drive. Right. It's still, you know, we're still not too bad. See, the quarterback pulls the ball down. We had good coverage in. And... It was kind of like that when we had good coverage. He seemed to scramble around, and he's not a great runner, but he did a good job of, you know, picking up eight or ten yards at several times that that uh, hurt us and kept them kept them control the football. That's third and five at the eight yard line. They did well on the third down plays. Here's a play right here for the moment difference in the ball game. David King, a freshman from Fairhope, near interception, and and. Uh, David's going to intercept a lot of those before he leaves Auburn. He's an outstanding athlete and a great competitor. Here they kick off, and, and this is a, a play in the game that uh, won't happen again. It's Clayton Buford, a freshman, had great talent, great ability. You can see Ken, Tim James trying to get him to stay in the end zone, but Clayton got a lot of confidence in his ability and, and uh, thought he could take it back all the way, and it just a... Uh, has a great catch right there by that split in Bumgardner. Puts the ball on the two yard line. 14 seconds to go. Now it's nine seconds. It's 14 they to three. They come back and, and hit the tight end on one of those crossing routes again. Just inside the end zone for the touchdown. And I guess they scored with like two seconds to go in the game in the half. And, you know, we talk about it every week that critical time right before the half, you know, don't give anything up and uh, you got a chance to make something happen. And, that certainly had an effect on the football game from a standpoint of, of Wake Forest going in confident and four points behind rather than than uh, 11 points behind. And uh, they came out the second half and played hard and were, did what they had to do to win the football game. All right, we'll return in just a minute after this word from the Colonial Company. Our feature today deals with the exciting field of research at Auburn University. The Physiology of Exercise Lab helps skilled athletes to perform better and non-athletes to achieve and maintain good levels of fitness and health by monitoring various bodily functions. We take uh, unhealthy or even healthy normal adults and we do some testing on them and we try to diagnose any disease that they may have, cardiovascular especially, lung function, then we prescribe an exercise program for them. And that's part of our adult fitness program and we have a runner's evaluation clinic which does basically the same thing with trained people. Hydrostatic or underwater weighing determines an individual's percent of body fat and gives researchers one measure of a person's fitness. Through these measurements, a lung capacity test, another laboratory evaluation, a personal fitness profile can be put together and an exercise prescription provided to the client. Auburn University is meaningful research for better, more productive lives for all of us. All right, Coach, we're going to pick up the action now in the third quarter where they go on a long drive. They held the ball for 17 plays, uh, throwing the ball with a controlled offense, which is very effective. Well, uh, they uh, 
they did a great job protecting the quarterback, and the quarterback did a good job <clears throat> when we had the deep receivers covered of uh, dumping the ball off to their backs and <clears throat> hitting the open guy. Yeah, they start off with a deep at cross over the middle that they plagued us with all day long, and we ran a combination of coverages. Here's see another missed tackle right there. Just, just, we just did not tackle like we got a tackle to, to win on defense. And the quarterbacks the also picked up the blitz well, didn't they? Well, the, the, uh, the blocking picked up the blitz well. Yeah. They, uh, they kept the backs in and picked up the blitz. And I don't think we ever got to them with a blitz last night, which is if you don't, if you don't get to them, then you're better off not to blitz. And um, we make Miller now, number 23, did a great job of running for him. Here comes the touchdown play. <clears throat> the quarterback faked inside, and they just slid a guy out there in the flat, and we didn't pick him up. So they take the lead, 17-14, midway the third. It doesn't take us long to get back on the board. Come back, Charlie Thomas hits every dress with a pass, carries the ball down to, I guess, around the 40-yard line. 33, we come right back with a end around, and Chris Wood puts the ball inside the 10. Here you can see it from Brian Lowe. So if the ball been thrown a little deeper, I believe Mike, Mike would have carried, carried that one in himself. We've got to do a better job of taking advantage of what the defense is doing and picking them with play action passes. And here's the reverse. Well executed. Blocking downfield. You can see David Jordan and people feeling back. Charlie Garner downfield making a block right there. Chris has got great speed as Ed West down in front of Chris, and we're going to take this one right on in the score. And you know, this is this is a this is a the mark of a class football team right here. We get behind this great running by Ron O'Neill, get the ball down inside the five. They, they come, we get behind, we come right back and score, and then we didn't do what we had to do on defense to hold the lead. Of course that. We get the ball back three times with the score 21 17 and didn't get any points on the board. So it wasn't all defense. It, it, like I said earlier, it was a combination of kicking game, offense, defense, a whole part of it, and us not coming up with a big play when we had to have it and on, on both sides of the football. Del Greco kicking this time. We have good coverage here. And he gets the ball out to the 22 yard line. Big play coming here. This is a pass, they throw it over the middle again, we get good collision right here, Greg Cut and Dennis Collier and Tim Brinkett, we knock the ball to loose on and I don't, I'm not Bob sure, Harris. Bob Harris recovered the fumble, here we come back and this, this was a mistake on my part, I'm trying to go for the big play right after that one and we stood, should have just stayed on the ground and Third down here. sustained the ball and took that one in and we, I think we could have salted away, that was a big play right there, we have a Missed pass, it would have given us a first down and kept the drive alive, but we miss it and have to punt. Allen Bolinger does a great job right here, kicks the ball out on about the eight or nine yard line. And uh, then I believe is this, is this A couple one? of possessions nowhere, each team. Now we go to the fourth quarter. There's a couple of students having a good time at the game. A great opportunity here at midfield. Right, this is fine execution on the part of Charlie Thomas and. Mike Edwards on a, just a little, a little dump route. Good running right here by Lionel James. Good block on the corner right there by Ron O'Neill. We're moving the football now, and we get it on down into position to where well, we should have gotten something out of it. And we, they catch us from behind right there, and we miss a field goal. It would have made it uh, 23 to 17. But we didn't get any points on that drive, and, and they get the ball at the 20-yard line, and we're getting a little pressure here. We got the sack on the quarterback, and one of our defensive linemen gets called for grabbing the face mask of an offensive lineman. They get a 15-yard penalty, and uh, they get gives, them, in gives, the them, gives them good field position. Right here, they get a, another face mask penalty there, and gives them now another to 15. big, big game. Missed tackles. Second and short. And they get the first. Job. First down. 
They don't get much on the sweep, but they come right back and break containment on the goal line on the, on the pass here. Bumgarner gets away on man coverage, and he just lays it right in out to him. Uh, he got confused on who was covering who there, and he got away from the man that was covering him man to man. And we're in the fourth quarter now, and we come back, and we're going to move the football again. You know, we got plenty of time to score. Hadn't anybody panicked on the sideline. Six minutes to go. Players are confident we can move the football. Outstanding run by Lionel James. He takes it down and, and makes a nice first down. And it off to the big fullback. And I tell you, Ron O'Neill, I thought, ran much harder last night and better than he did in the first game. He's a force inside, no doubt about Pitch that. Pitch it to, to Lionel again here. Lionel makes a nice cut. Drops the ball and gets on it. Then we have the drop of ball here. Charlie gets on it. Then the next play reaches in. Somebody pulls the ball out of his hand and Wake Forest gets on it and they run the clock out. That's and that's, it away. That's, a, that's a game. Wake Forest played hard. Auburn played hard. They played better than we did. They won the football game. It's hard to accept and it's hard to take, but we got the kind of folks I think we've got. Then they'll be ready to play when we go to Knoxville. I think it. Uh, we got a young football team. We're playing a lot of sophomores, a lot of freshmen. Uh, I think that uh, we should get better each week. I hope that we can eliminate some of the mistakes that we made. If we can do that and, and uh, get ready to play mentally, then we're going to have a chance. You know, I, I just uh, I'm looking forward to going to Knoxville. It's a, it's a great opportunity for us, and, and uh, if we can win up there, then maybe take a little of the sting off of this one. But uh, every week's a challenge, and this is another one of them, and that's the way the game is, and that's what makes it such a great, great game. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. Tennessee next week, great rivalry. They'll have about 95,000 maniacal people up there, and... Uh, they had a confidence builder on Saturday night with a win over Colorado State, big win. They needed that. Well, I've looked at a little film on Tennessee, and I haven't talked to our scout that was up there last night, but they have a lot of a lot of talented athletes, and, and uh, they'll be ready to play. The Tennessee-Auburn game is a, is a great rivalry, and uh, I think that our players will remember the game from last year and the year before, and I've always enjoyed going to Knoxville. Make some you know, that's, well, that's, you know, that those games like that is, is what uh, what it's all about. And uh, I hope our players are looking forward to going up there. How about because the, I think we can make it interesting if they are. How about the physical condition? How do we get through the... Uh, I don't think we got anybody hurt last night. We got a few little old nicks and bruises, but uh, nothing major. And uh, thankfully, because we're not very deep. And, and uh, so, but we should be in good shape going up there. We're going to start back tomorrow and try to regroup and... Get ready to go. With the young folks, uh, and you did have effort, so it's 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 not all bad, Coach. Well, we're gonna we're gonna be the kind of football team that should get better every week. We only we only start we started three seniors last night on on offense and and um, two on defense, and uh, you know it's just uh, we're a young football team, and we're gonna make young football team mistakes. And uh, you know maybe we're trying to do too much offensively and defense. We may need to condense it down a little bit and. And, uh, but we, we should get better with, with exposure. And um, we're going to get a lot of it next Saturday. I can show you that. You'll travel out of Montgomery, I would assume, on Friday? All right, we leave Montgomery and fly into Knoxville and work out in Nayland Stadium and then come back to uh, play at 1.30, I guess, Saturday. We'll try to announce the departure time uh, Friday from uh, Montgomery. Thank you, Coach. Good luck next week. Thank you. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye is a presentation of WSFA-TV Sports. been brought to you by the Colonial Company.
Mark, Mark Dominey and Greg Carr in on the tackle. Alatoria. Go back to throw. Good coverage by David King. Watch this reverse. That's almost a, a big play for Auburn right there, and they turn in this great effort right here. You can't see it, but I looked at it this morning. Donnie Hunter got blocked, got up off the ground, and saved a touchdown. As Dennis Stutak on an outstanding play for a two yard loss. Zalatory. Come back. Tackle again by Stutak. They're at the 19 yard line now. They get it down inside the five. We call a, a certain defense here. And it's third and one at that point. And we have it really just a missed assignment. It's just that simple. And of course, that's a, or if you have a missed assignment, then it's a, it's a touchdown. And that's what it was. And they go ahead 10 to nothing. And that ended up with scoring, but it certainly didn't end up the football. I'm telling you. There's Charlie Thomas making a nice run on the, on the option. Second and 10 here. Another. Great scramble by Charlie and Ed West blocking down in front of him. Our offensive line is getting better and better. Uh, Phil has done a terrific job. Coach Callaway and the starters are playing actually seven people in our offensive line. Uh, Keith Euchre and Charlie Garnum at guard. There's Big Ron in there, almost a late hit there. That was a fourth down play, and he's running in there for the first down. They got good penetration here, and we didn't get. Fourth and three on this play now, going for it. Lionel James, that's, he's, a, he's a money player. If, if you got to have it in the clutch, you got to go to either he or Ron O'Neill. Third down Great six. Great play right there. And it, it's just, you know, it's just so close. Mm -hmm. If Mike doesn't jump to catch that football, there, he's going to catch it in bounds, and, of course, we end up missing the field goal right at right before the half that would have been the difference in the ball game. You know, we kick that field goal and then going down the wire at the end, it's going to be 10 to 10, and, and uh, we got a chance to win it with a field goal. We'll be back in just a moment. One of the many interesting programs underway at Auburn University is the MITE, or MITE, program. Students are recommended by their schools for the MITE program. They live on the Auburn. Coach, a lot of people felt very confident at the half because Auburn had moved the football and seemed to be the most physical team. Well, you know, we were fresh at the half. Uh, Phil, our, our players weren't tied. They, you know, I don't, and I don't think there was any doubt in their mind about us going back out and winning the football game. And uh, I felt good about it. Uh, you know, we moved. The, we, they really hadn't stopped us. And uh, it's just a matter of going out and doing what we do best. And 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 getting stronger and stronger, which we did in the ball game. We got stronger, you can see it. We get stronger as the game goes on. And we come back, start right away, hand the ball to Big Ron, he makes a couple yards, we take it outside and pitch it to the Lionel, and he makes five or six. We get the first down. O'Neill again, he's he's making them respect him inside, and that's opening well, up the outside game. Now. It's, uh, you know, he's just a big and strong. It, uh, here's a play right here that we go to and make a couple of yards on the pass. We try to throw the dump route. But they hold. They, they hold and we punt. Tennessee only had two first downs the second half and, and never really threatened to score. They got, uh, I guess they made one first down after we fumbled the ball in the, in the fourth quarter. Okay, we're a couple of series into the third quarter now. Tennessee. You can see we're getting pressure on the quarterback. He scrambles out. And we get good reaction coming back to the line of scrimmage and Get him for a yard gain is the option. Again, we well played by Quincy Williams and third and three. Ronnie Ballou. Good pressure on the quarterback. Throws the ball low. And they One have of those to punt. good punts. Chris Wood builds a punt. Tennessee did a good job with that kicking game yesterday. Excellent. Two plays into this series now, running the corner. Picks up a big first down here. Ron's running inside. 
You can see the offensive line's opening up some holes for him. At the Auburn 48 now. David David Jordan in our offensive line is playing well. Pat Arrington's getting better. Joe Rowe and Greg Zip as a dump pass to Ed West. Picks up 15 yards. We're getting in close. This right there was mighty close to them passing the fence. On fourth down to the 37, you elect to go ahead and kick it into the end zone because it's a very close game. You want that well, that's to right. The field position was important to us. We were playing well on defense. And just, you know, I just knew we were going to take one in and score. That linebacker did a good job. Here's Harvey running the option. Tennessee's playing hard on defense. They're getting a lot of folks around the football. And they have tremendous speed on defense. This is the punt return right here, I believe, that goes for the touchdown. And they have a, a player that tackles one of ours and call back right there it is. I see it just at the bottom of the screen. The guy's got great speed. And we knew he was dangerous coming into the game. And we we just we got to get a little more height on the punch to give our coverage a little better time. Plus, do a better job with the coverage. They did a good job of holding us up, which is they kicked it you know, deep and then got great excusable. field position. There's a pass over the middle, I think, for one of their first downs. Chris Martin on the tackle. If they score here, coach, it's all over. All right. Well, they're not going to score. We come up with some big plays, big plays on fourth down. I think this is the third down play here. Here comes the third and three now. Third and three coming up. At the 24 yard line. Nice play by Edmund Nelson. Fourth and two, they decided to Humphrey, go for it. Danny Skutak, run the sweep. Good pressure, good penetration by the corner. Good call by Coach Wallace on the press box. We had the weak corner blitz on and David King got good penetration and the rest of his teammates got there to wrap him up, keep him from getting the play. Here's a nice play on the option, pitching to Lionel for about 16, 18 yards. Ten minutes to go now. <clears throat> We're going to move the football right here. Ron running inside. we running the same play a great deal. This is a play that hurt us in the game. Gave them field position, gave them the ball. But our defense comes right back and takes it away from them. They have to punt it into the end zone. Fine play right there by Scott Riley, Stu Tack, Ronnie Ballou, Dow Altman. All getting around the football. Third down play here, third and nine. Good pressure. Bob Harris, Jeff Jackson makes a sack on the quarterback. They have to punt again. Kick Auburn it. holds them again. Now kick, this is the drive. Kick it into the end zone. We come right back, and I'm still confident we're going to win the football game right here. You know, all we got to do is just keep doing what we've been doing, and everything's going to take care of itself. Inside five minutes now. That was Hobby running for the first down at the 33. There's Ron again, off tackle. It goes out to around the 40. And they do a good job right there with penetration. Third down, three at the 40. Got to have it. Lionel, great run. Just, you know, just picking his way in. Like I said, he's a, he's a, the kind of player that you want to have the football when you got to have it. Freshman you quarterback. You can see him fighting and scratching to try to get it too. There's a big play right here on Ken Hobbs' part. Picks up the first down. In the third and three situation, pull the ball pulls the ball down and runs it. Great play right here on Ron O'Neill, breaks out into the open. And those linebackers at the bunch of half ran him down. First and 10 at the 27. Run the sweep. Well, we probably should have thrown the ball here a time or two more, but we're moving the things so well on the ground and just, just a matter of getting Here comes getting a big the ball play, the third zone. and seven. Big play Great here. Great play right here by Harvey to Chris Wood, great catch on the play. Gives us a first down. Ken pitches the ball to Lionel. He picks up a couple inside, inside the eight. Ten. Inside a minute now. Takes the ball here to the 
around the three yard line. No timeouts. The run the sweep, and you can see that Keith Euchre's arm hit Javi and knock the ball loose from him, and the game's over. Clock runs out. We had to uh, we had to call timeout a couple of times to to get to the team settled down in that last drive, and it cost us in the end. And uh, you know you can suck against yourself about using timeouts, but if we hadn't called them, we might not have gotten down there. The thing that we've got to do is is be uh, better prepared on the sideline, uh, better organization as far as calling plays is concerned, get a simpler system to get our plays into the game, and um, probably simplify too. You know, we just you know you, you're talking about playing with a with a a senior quarterback that has not run this offense and a freshman quarterback that, you know, college football is, is new to, too. And uh, our personnel is limited to such that we I think we've just got to simplify what we're doing and, and give the ability that we do have a chance to win without beating ourselves. We'll be back in just a minute. Well, as you might expect, there were some disappointed uh, people in the Auburn dressing room. Let's look at some of them. Uh, we had a tall sweep. We're going to try to get it out wide, and try to pick up two or three, maybe get it in an end zone, and try to just get it out of bounds because we didn't have and any more time out. Failing getting out of bounds, you were, you were going to try to score, get it out of bounds, stop the clock. Yes, sir. Just didn't work out that way. Hey, but you took the team down close. Uh, how does it feel to suddenly be playing college football before 95,000 screaming people on the last ditch drive? Well, I'll tell you, it's something that you couldn't really hear. I couldn't even hear my heart myself hardly speak at all. Uh, I thought the players did a great job firing off the ball, and I guess they heard me, but I really couldn't even hear myself. How do you feel? You okay? You went through a game you probably carried 25 or so times. You okay? Fine. You feel like this team's going to get better? We'll get better. I think we're all confident. We just, uh, I think everybody kind of got a little uh, anxious there at the end when we saw the clock and we didn't know what to do. We just tried to rush the play. I think that's what caused the fumble there at the end. Coach, it was a tough loss, mm -hmm. but the road gets rougher. Well, it won't get any easier, that's for sure. Um, but I tell you what, I don't, I don't. I go back. I don't care about Nebraska. I don't care about Tennessee. I don't care about Alabama. I care about Auburn. If we keep getting better and we just, you know, the the we, we find out something about our people, you know, every week that helps us, and I find out something about myself and something about our coaching staff that's gonna gonna help us, and uh, just. You know, I just want our players to just hang in there and our fans and a student body and don't lose faith in the, in, because we got some, I'd say, great football players. We don't have enough of them, but we got some great ones, but we got some great people. Okay, and we'll see you next week with Nebraska. Good luck. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye is a presentation of WSFA TV Sports. has been brought to you by the Colonial Company.
Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Boyd Nick is fast to Red Phillips. Is good for the touchdown. The 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Tucker Fredrickson. Solomon to throw. Straight back in the pocket. Throws it for Beasley. He's got it in the open. At the 20. Touchdown, Auburn. It is not. It is not. Brought to you by the Colonial Company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Coach, when you win, everything's a waltz, isn't it? Well, it's mighty nice. I uh, feel I'm so happy for our fans, our students, and our coaching staff, and, of course, most of all for the players. That uh, Yesterday was a result of a, you know, a group of kids just hanging in there and fighting and having faith and believing and, and uh, Coaching staff doing a great job with, you know, getting them back up, ready to play, and uh, against what I thought was a very, very good LSU defensive football team. And uh, I got to be proud of our offensive staff and our offensive football team, and our defense played about like he'd been playing, you know, for the last three weeks. But uh, it was a big win for Auburn, and uh, I'm just glad to be a small part of it. You don't reckon you've started a new trend platooning quarterbacks, have you, Coach? Well, you know, we're going into the game. Uh, we had, uh, I wasn't really worried about our quarterbacks from a standpoint. I knew they would play as good as they're capable of playing. And uh, once we made a decision to move Charlie to running back, uh, I didn't know if Joe was going to come down with pneumonia and Harvey wasn't going to be able to play, but it still wouldn't have made any difference about the decision. I, we had made a decision, told Charlie we were going to go with the younger kids. and and uh, not sacrifice this year, but get ready for the, you know, for the future. But uh, John Murphy's taken a lot of snaps and got a lot of confidence in his, his play. He's a good option quarterback, and of course he's a fighter and a competitor. And uh, Randy Campbell had done well in, in practice and the JV games, and it's just a matter of getting Clayton Buford enough work, you know, before he'll be ready. So, and then of course Joe's the old hand that uh, has got the settling effect and the. And that golden touch yesterday. Big plays that, in that well, first drive. That uh, got him in the end zone. And, of course, uh, he'd been around a long time. And, and just uh, he did three or four things in the game yesterday that that uh, maybe the young one, younger ones wouldn't have done or couldn't have done. I think they probably could have done it, but they wouldn't have done it. He had, a, had uh, you know, just several big plays just from, from uh, not ability but just thinking. Okay. We will... Uh, get into the first half of play in just a minute and take a look at that opening drive which was such a great one but right now let's go into the Auburn dressing room and see what happened right after the game well we were just gonna go out and run straight at him and uh, just just run get the fullback going and straight at him. Going at him in the mud, did that bother you guys, digging him out? No, sir. It didn't help this morning. It hurt us, I believe. You, just, you got a slow start this year, but you fought hard and come back. How does it feel? It feels great, man. It feels great to come back. I feel I feel so happy, man, to play under Coach Dye and his team. It just, it just happened. Just big, big victory today. Can you, can you, can you describe it? It's hard to describe. We went out there and played together the way we, you know, should have been playing all year. You know, like I said, I'd be so happy. Blocking on the corner. I saw you put your head down and go after one. Like <laughs> well, I got to get better at that field. And, uh, I think I did an average job at that day, but I'm going to work hard next week and get better at it. <laughs> we talked about it during the week, and we pretty much knew that uh, all of us were going to get a shot, and whoever had the hot hand was going to stay in the game. And John and Joe seemed to do real well today, and they, I'm glad they played good. And LSU came to play, and we're just thrilled that we had the opportunity to win the game. I was nervous, but I knew once I'd get that first play over with that everything would be settled down, and it did. Uh, I didn't sleep good Wednesday night, but Thursday night I settled down. When the tight end blocked down, I was responsible for taking it down, you know, if he handed off in there. This defense is coming around, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's been about the best one I've seen yet here at all. And you've been here a while? Yes, I have, five years. <laughs> it really feels good to play, you know, uh, good defensively and uh, getting the win column. Yeah, SEC win column. Oh, yeah, it's been a while since we gotten that one. That feels really good. <laughs> yeah, we decided we had to give them a little the short outs on certain coverages, and we finally got them getting out of that. They tried to come across the middle a couple of times and didn't make it. So uh, we, we did what we set out to do, and we stopped them. You like that specialty team? Oh, yeah, buddy, that's me. Wild man, ready for it. <laughs> 
we've had the same effort in all four games. It's just we need we needed to iron out a couple things, you know, like the turnovers and stuff. And we're finally coming around, you know. There's everybody's giving 100%, and that's the way it should be. Just like draw up offense, go out and take the ball up and down the field, and defense come back and hold them three down the punt. You know, that's how we played today. Second half, you know, we started out kind of slow, but you know, it picked up. I saw you guys leading the singing. Boy, you sing loudly, though. <laughs> hey, that's just in us, Phil. You know how that is. <laughs> The Colonial Company is in the business of developing your future, building your tomorrows, making your dreams come true, serving thousands of families throughout the Southeast, securing your future, helping you live better today, and bringing news and music to your life. The Colonial Company, good company for your future. This is the home the Bensons thought they couldn't afford. Today, I sold it to them. You see, I work for a Better Homes and Gardens member firm, and we look at the total package, the price, the financing alternatives, in this case, a graduated payment, and the tax benefits. When you look at it this way, you probably can buy the home you want. Let us show you. It's gorgeous. And it's like moving with someone you know. Now in Birmingham, Mobile, Gulf Shores, and Montgomery. Coach Dennis Collier uh, plays both ways, cheerleading and football. Well, and Dennis is really good for our football team. He's uh, he's also a 3.5 student in engineering, too, so he's pretty sharp along with it. No wonder he talks so well. <laughs> Let's get in the tape now, and we'll see a kind of a wet day, Jordan Hare. Uh, but the rain let up, and the field was in relatively good shape. I feel like our fans really got involved in the game yesterday. I, I know that it picked our players up, and you could certainly feel it down on the field. And here's Clayton Buford running back to open and kick off. Breaking and a tackle. He just, uh, they, they kicked the ball to the left, and we had the right return on it. And it might could have gotten just as much going straight up the field. Here's first play from scrimmage, John Murphy running the option, keeping it, picking up six yards on the play. Walk on sophomore. Coming right back, pitches to Lionel James. Lionel makes first down. This is a great uh, drive for us. They kicked off. They had a kind of a foul up there. And we, we got out there. They had too many men to that side, and really we were running upstream. Third and ten here. Big play. Big play. This first time Joe came in the game. Throws to Ed West on a flood route. Picks up 12, 15 yards. Big play in the drive. It kept it alive, and, and we take it on in the score. Go Come right back with John Murphy. This is an outstanding play right here. You're going to see a great block by... George Peoples and Lionel hits that crease. Good blocking by the offensive line coming off of football. Watch this block right here by George Peoples on that 51. Oh, my. And Lionel just slips right in that crease right there and breaks one tackle right there at the line of scrimmage and down the sideline, steps on out of bounds right there. Second and eight now at the 23-yard line of LSU. We were going to take a football. This is a nice play by Joe. Gets outside and and uh, the pursuit overruns him. He turns back up inside and gets the ball down in real good field position. Come back with a blast play inside. Lionel takes it down inside the 10. I think this is a touchdown play here where Coming we come in. out and throw to Mike Edwards on a little flood route to the weak side. And Charles Thomas Mike. blocking on the corner there too, Coach. Mike takes it in for the touchdown. You got another shot of it here, ground right. level. Comes back, and you can see the Mike. Mike is just a very unselfish player. He's a tight end, a split end, and wing back. And we lined him up at running back yesterday, and he did a fine job there. Okay, Blanks kicks it into the end zone, and it's LSU's ball at the 20 now. Uh, Phil, I mentioned earlier, we got a break at the start of the game, I felt like. it. Uh, they won the toss, and they wanted to kick to us, so we got the ball and the win in the first quarter. And and, uh, of course, we take that first one in, and you can see the defense. That was a second and one, and they throw them for a three-yard loss, and they end up not making the first down. Third and two right here. They come back, and I like to see teams that like to throw the ball on third and short. And, uh, you know, they're going to make some of them, but they're going to drop some like that right there. And those teams that line up and run it straight at, straight at you. This is a nice punt return right here by Chris Woods, and good blocking. Danny Skutak gets a great block right there. He might have scored had, it, had the field not been wet. Watch his foot slip out of bounds right here. Surprised when he cuts back inside, his foot gets out of bounds. But 
we haven't gotten a big playoff of our punt returns like we, we feel like we should have all year. We've got ability, and it's just a matter of execution on the thing. This is a third and five play. Great play right here by Joe Sullivan throwing to Tommy Carroll, and I think Tommy Carroll is playing good football now. Tommy doesn't have great speed or anything. As John Murphy throwing to uh, Tommy Carroll again, and the guy comes over his back. Joe right here is actually throwing the ball away. Had his man covered and throws it away, and we kick a field goal. 33-yarder by Al Del Greco. Kicking game was a big factor in the game yesterday, and it always is when you got a you know a field like we had in the weather conditions and playing defense, and we didn't have any bad plays on the kicking game, and really had some big plays. Look at defense right there. Zach Hardy, off stopping off tackle play, and Zach has come on there and begin to play real well, and. And it just tickles me to death. As Donnie Humphrey making an outstanding play in a short yardage situation against uh, the option comes from the backside. They come back and there's Edmund Nelson inside. Edmund Nelson and Donnie Humphrey are playing outstanding football along with Dow Altman inside now. And uh, just defensively up front, I think we've gotten to be a, a pretty pretty good football team. So I, the defense just, stops them on two drives. Coming, coming, he's got. Got caught from behind, had some running room outside. We had to punt the football. We get a big play on the kicking game right here. Their safety fumbles it, Dennis Collier recovers it. And I think we take this one down and get a field goal on. Right. Here's John Murphy again on the option, keeping it turning, and John doesn't have any, he's not great speed, great anything. Third except, one play here. Except he's a winner. As Ron O'Neill, that linebackers are two fine football players. This is a nice play by Joe. Not anything fancy, but it picks up a couple of yards. We have a middle screen call right here, and if we could just got it over that guy's head, it might have gone in the end zone. You're right, they had all blue near, shirts down there. Near interception. And we kick a field goal that uh, puts us up 13 to nothing here. 44-yarder by Del Greco there, and that little guy likes it. Oh, he's he? having a good time, and I am too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they have one more uh, opportunity before the half. Riss is a fine quarterback. Hits his big tight end there, tackled by Mark Normandy, Bob Harris. Has a fine play by Donnie Humphrey again. Third and eight coming. We didn't get quite as good a pressure on the quarterback as I would like to have. They throw out. Third down play, tackled by Jeff Jackson. Hold him short of the first. Force him into a punting situation. I say that punter did a good job right there. We might have blocked that one. Quincy, Quincy Williams was coming. Come in and Chris Wood fields it and gets back up yard upfield for six, seven yards. So Auburn has dominated the first half of play, and they take it into the half at 13 to nothing. Uh, really strongest half of football, I guess, uh, this year, Coach. Well, I think it, uh, you know, I think it probably carried out our game playing offensively and defensively better than we have all year long. And, uh, you know, going into the game, we knew that LSU was a very strong uh, defensive football team, and we knew that uh, we were going to be playing, you know, uh, an offensive team that couldn't have a lot of confidence, and we tried to simplify what we were doing and, and uh, felt like it. You, you try to finesse a team like LSU and they get you in deep trouble, so we felt like the best opportunity to beat them was to keep it simple and go straight at them and, and try to go right at their strength. And that's what we did. And, and uh, of course, the players played hard and, and, and we got some good blocking from our backs and control of football. I think we had it 82 snaps to their 55 yesterday. And uh, I think that uh, our coaching staff and players got as much out of our, our ability as just about you can get. We'll be back in just a minute after this from our sponsor. Safeco can help careful people save on all kinds of insurance. For your car, camper, or boat, your business, your home, even your life. After all, it's the people we don't insure that make Safeco such a good deal for those we do. Your Save with Safeco headquarters in Alabama is the Colonial Insurance Agency.
We thought it would take years to own a home. But we got the facts and all the help we needed from Louder Realty and Better Homes and Gardens. Louder makes it easy. Love makes it home. Louder Realty and Better Homes and Gardens. Last year on this program, we showed you how the Auburn University Department of Fish and Allied Aquaculture was working on the problem of aquatic weeds. Now we'd like to show you their work on a different breed of cat. This Auburn graduate student is not wrestling a shark. This is a record-sized spoonbill catfish. They're being raised by Auburn fisheries researchers because the eggs are remarkably similar to expensive Russian caviar. Well, these aren't so much a catfish as they are a sturgeon. They are actually closely related to the sturgeon, much more so than catfish. And uh, yes, there is. The fishermen seem to be able to market as much as they can capture. They're getting on the order of a $25 a pound. Not only that, but the fish itself is also edible and attractive because there are no bones. Researchers are having some difficulty in raising sufficient numbers of the spoonbills in captivity, but their success thus far is apparent, though not for everybody. I personally uh, don't understand why people attach so much value to uh, uh, fish eggs, but as long as they do so, it will certainly make uh, work with this fish attractive. Auburn University is meaningful research for the people of Alabama. Coach, uh, 13 points is nice, but it is not comfortable. Uh, two touchdowns and, and, you know, things are tough again. At least well, one touchdown. Well, that's right. And, of course, they came right back. He took the second half kickoff. Of, we, they kicked off to us, and, and uh, we didn't make a first down. They, they take it right down and score and make it 13-7. to seven. And, of course, that's the end of the scoring for them. But it certainly made the game much closer. And uh, But, you know, our kids never, you know, we never backed off. And we just kept with a stay with our game plan and, and stuck to what had gotten us to where we were. Continued to play all the quarterbacks and, and uh, Clayton Buford, a little freshman, came in and gave us a couple of big plays. John Murphy gets hurt, I believe, the first or second drive of the second half There's and of course that left show. us with Joe and Joe and uh, Joe was, um, hadn't worked a great deal, was still weak from having the flu and and um, so we Clayton came in and gave us a couple of big plays. Sure did. Okay, let's get into the, the second half of play. And we'll see them on offense for the fair, their first possession after Auburn has to punt on its first series. Well, they take this, they throw a couple of uh, out cuts here and just uh, kind of pick us a couple of times and, and they get it down close and then they hit the back. And that was a, that was a third down play right there. Right. Now this, you're going to see a late flag. Very late. Uh, Mark Norman is running off the field, and the guy, I don't know where he came from to call the play. The penalty, but it was very close. And That's But it. anyway, it uh, gave him a first down, good field position. Come back, and we have another outstanding play. We, we played the option yesterday as well as we played it all year long. And David King and Dennis Gutak making a play. Yeah, they hit the little old back over the middle, and this kind of hurt us all day long. And uh, they get it down inside the 10 yard line, and they're going to come back and they have a almost you can see that ball all the way around on his back and he almost fumbled that ball we could have gotten it there maybe we could have kept him off the board touchdown play coming here Richard makes a good uh, run. it's sprint out pass and actually this is uh, I don't fault the players so much right here we we were in a defense that was not very good against that particular play look at that old legal he looked like he's ready to play yesterday too didn't he <laughs> fierce got looking that. fella well he got he might alert here's a pass to Joe Joe throws to Joe. <laughs> was batted down, kicked up, and he made a couple of yards with it. Second and nine. We come back and ran the blast play inside. Coach Casey wanted to put this play in. He just felt like it was a play that would give us some muscle running straight at people, and it really was a big play for us yesterday. And and uh, he felt like it would make our backs a little tougher and more physical blocking when we had to go outside with it. Good coverage here. Good coverage. Good punt by Allen. And we get out and no return on it as a wild man again. Okay, seven He has a good time playing. Touchdown and, and they're ahead. This is critical time. It's 13-7 right to seven and of course there's Chris Martin and Dennis Gutak, two linebackers on the play. Big play right there by Quincy Williams and Donnie Humphrey and Dow Altman stopping the off tackle play. Third and three. There's a big play right here. They throw hit the back in the flat. He picks up the first down. Greg Tut knocks him loose from the football along with Chris Martin. And 
Bob Harris comes up with a fumble and it puts us in business out about midfield. How many we, times does a team score after a turnover? Coach? I don't know, but they were having a good time playing defense, and that's the way it should be. We throw a little crossing right here and let up good protection. Joe hits Tommy Carroll on the crossing route. I don't think that picked up the first down, but put it close enough to where we're going to get it right here. That second little lunge right there, I think, got the first down for us, and, and uh, we take this one on in the score. Here's Clayton, beautiful, the freshman quarterback. Makes a nice run on the counter option and picks up seven, eight yards, valuable Good. yards, and come right back. George Peoples makes a nice run inside off the blast play and gets it down to the 21. We come back with a sweep to Lionel James. I guess right here is a, a blast again to Mike Edwards. Mike runs good up inside again, and we run it right dead at the heart of the defense now because they play their tackles in that tight. And we come back with a sweep outside. Lionel picks up four or five yards, gets knocked out of bounds. George makes a big run right here, too, to get it down George close. People, this, is a, this doesn't look too fancy, folks, but I'm going to tell you what, that's squirming for every inch and gets it down inside the three-yard line. And Joe Sullivan is going to score on the next play on the option. LSU had the, way, the play pretty well defended, and Joe just turns back up inside, kind of across the grain, and gets it in the end zone for the touchdown. And we go up 19 to seven. Wanted to go for two here, and, and did. And we were probably late getting the play called, and it was a little bit of confusion. But anyway, it didn't. We didn't get the two-point conversion, so that left it at 19 to seven. Now it's a matter of defense in the fourth quarter. Well, we, you know, we've got a lot of confidence in our defense, and they're playing well, and there's a fine tackle by Danny Skutak. And, uh, now and we're, giving, the we're giving them a little, give them a little of the short stuff. Here's a fine play right here by Greg Tut. We lined up in a pressure defense and then backed off and played zone, and I think the quarterback kind of confused him a little bit. And See it again. But Greg's in an excellent position right here to make the play. I tell you, our secondary, I think, is just playing really fine football right now. Greg Tutt and David King and Dennis Collier and Mark Dorman and Bob Harris and all of them. Another LSU possession midway of the quarter now. This is a fine play. Good reception on the part of that split in McDaniel. He's a great receiver, got great speed, and sure. was good coming into the game. And here's that little pass out in the flat again. Dennis Kutak knocks him out of bounds. You're going to see him go to well once too often here in a minute and get the quarterback for a loss. That's a fine play by Quincy Williams on the option, and I believe that was a short yardage play there. Right. Third and three now. Seems to go three. outside on the option. Here's a fine play by Dow Altman. They tried, that, tried to hit that back in the flat again. We had coverage on covered. it. You're right. And um, then they have to punt. And then I, maybe this is a fourth down play right here. Right. I don't think he would have made his first down. We had some people come in and our defense is swarming the football and doing the way you're supposed to do. I don't think we got quite as much pressure on the quarterback yesterday as I would like to have gotten. Their last chance now, late in the fourth. But they did a good job of dumping the ball off to their backs, and yeah. here's Chris Martin and company making the play. Here's a great play right here. Pressure by Quincy Williams. Quarterback pitches the ball on the ground, and we get it on the 50-yard line, and that wound it up. It was old 90s, old Ben Thomas in there, wasn't it? Yeah, Ben's played. Vernon plays. Blackett, excuse me, Coach. Vernon 90s, Blackett. 90s Vernon Blackett. Right. 91, Ben was in the game. And uh, as the offense coming back on the field, that's good to see the offense get the ball moving yesterday and didn't have a turnover in the football game. And That was a key, wasn't it, Coach? Well, you know, the things that I mentioned earlier, uh, Phil, in the year that uh, are so important, uh, penalties, Big factor. We had we gave them one five-yard penalty on delay a game on a punting situation, and we had uh, I think two other penalties for 15 yards, a clipping penalty in that pass interference call uh, for 30 yards, which is you don't want any, but uh, it's much better than we've done in the past. And then of course the um, the fourth quarter, which we won, uh, critical situations in the game, fourth down situations, we won uh, won that area. Uh, the turnovers. We had none. They had three. And um, so in the kicking game. And, of course, our kicking game was far superior to theirs. And I think we won every area, every category that uh, you need to win if you're going to win a football game. We'll return in just a minute after this word from the Colonial Company.
Suppose your color TV disappeared. Would your homeowner's insurance give you full protection, or would your loss be based on depreciated value? With Safeco Full Value Coverage, you get new for old, even at today's prices. Your Save with Safeco headquarters in Alabama is the Colonial Insurance Agency. Saying goodbye may be the only hard part of this family's move to a new town. That's because they selected Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Service to help. I sold the present home at their price. And I found them this home in their new town in terms they could afford. My knowledge of financing alternatives and our computer relocation system makes a big difference in today's market. And it's like moving with someone you know. Now in Birmingham, Mobile, Gulf Shores, and Montgomery. The Colonial Company is in the business of developing your future, building your tomorrows, making your dreams come true, serving thousands of families throughout the Southeast, securing your future, helping you live better today, and bringing news and music to your life. The Colonial Company, good company for your future. On the road again next week, Coach, with an old rival, Georgia Tech, a team that has not played well since they beat Alabama. Well, I don't know that they haven't played well. Uh, they lost to Tennessee yesterday, 10-7, to the same score Tennessee beat us by. They're a lot of, like we are. They, they're not a, I don't think, have great ability, but their kids play hard. Coach Curry will have them ready to play, and, of course, we're playing at their place. And uh, we got to play as good as we're capable of playing, you know, from here on out. Anybody we play can beat us, and, and uh, we've got to continue to improve. And, and take pride in the little things during the week, and, and uh, I just hope that uh, this win will help us and give us a little more confidence and uh, do the things we got to do to, to be a better football team each week. Okay, Coach, good luck next week. We'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. And brought to you by the Colonial Company. Mere spectators, but by the sincere affection and the active prayer of millions of friends. Thanks be to God. The Archbishop of Canterbury has struck the very theme which he, Prince Charles, and Lady Diana wanted to share with the rest of the world. They've asked people throughout the world to rededicate themselves to marriage. And in many cases, they have had dedication ceremonies. came up to me and said, if you block it, I'll get it and run it in. And I said, okay. I said, I'm going to say a small prayer. And I said a small prayer. And all of a sudden, when the ball snapped, something said, let go.
And then you got one of those room service catches, huh? Oh, yeah. I said to myself, now, I'm going to take a chance. And if it bounced straight up in my arms, okay. But if it don't bounce up in my arm, I'm going to fall on it. And I did just like this. It bounced straight up in my arms, and I hauled butt. I just, <laughs> I just hauled like it. it. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Boyd Nick is fast for Red Phillips. Is good for the touchdown. The 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Tucker Fredrickson. Solomon to throw. Straight back in the pocket. Throws it for Beasley. He's got it in the open. At the 20. Touchdown, Auburn. It is not. It is not. It's going out and he's going to score. Brought to you by the Colonial Company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, Grant Field, Atlanta, Auburn Rec Tech, 31 to 7. There's been 84 of those, Coach, but that has to be one of the real satisfying ones for Auburn fans. Well, Phil, it wasn't easy. And, uh, you know, the, the score of the game certainly wasn't an indication of how the game was played because uh, it was a, just a real dogfight right down into the fourth quarter and then, of course, the blocked field goal and uh, resulting in a touchdown kind of put Tech out of the game. and. We came back and got three turnovers late in the, you know, in the fourth quarter and got another one in. But uh, I thought Coach Curry and his team were well prepared and uh, I th did a good job against us. We are, you know, we're still not uh, doing some of the things that we got to do to beat some of the football teams we got to play down the uh, last half of the season. And, uh, you know, we just got to work real, real hard to, to execute better and we can play better defensively and offensively and every phase of the game really uh, you know we had a our kicking game yesterday we had a had a fumble on a punt that was uh, could have cost us a ball game and uh, you know we just a lot of little things that we're not doing as well as we could do and uh, but it was a big win for us yesterday and uh, I'm mighty happy for the players and our coaching staff did a great job in preparation for the you know for the tech game uh, our fans were super at the game and I think everybody from Auburn had a good time. I think they did. We'll go into the winning dressing room now and see what happened. We got a big week ahead of us. You understand that? We'll have to be better next week than we've been all season. To have a chance. I'm going to tell you something right now. I ain't a damn bit afraid. <laughs> Conduct yourself like gentlemen. Handle your victory with class. Be humble. There's been a time when we've been over there on the other side. You got to talk to reporters. Handle that with class. Tim, you got that start today. How was it? It was great. It was great. I, I was, you know, I've been waiting for a long time. I just, you know, just dream come true for me. Y'all kind of took him out of the offense at times today, Jeff. That was a good effort. Yeah, we did. We really got out there, you know. I got really to the pace good. or something? Yes, sir. Just didn't get no sack like I wanted. Huh? I wanted to get a sack. Okay. You made some good cuts today. Thanks, so. sir. Made some big plays. Hey, you made a pretty good cut for a tight end there on that, uh, what was that, third down play you got that first down? Yes, sir. You know, 38, something like that. They were coming back against the grain a lot. They were cut back, running plays and cutting them back backside. And then, uh, that was about their best play, I guess. Yeah, they, they got more yardage on that than anything, I think. They're just trying to get people to pursue too quick. Hey, they called your number at the goal line, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they did. Oh, was it just a straight uh, option play? Yeah, just an option, 66 off tackle, outside what you, option. What are you thinking about? I didn't. I was just thinking if I got to make sure I held on to the play. <laughs> yeah, we worked real hard. We had a real good week of practice. Coach Dye said it was our best practice this year so far Tuesday when we was in full pads. So we were, we were really well prepared by the coaches. What was the plan today? Well, we was going to take it right at them and, you know, run the ball and throw when we had to and just see what happens. Uh, on the uh, fourth down call down there where you decided to go for it, uh, it was just a straight option play? Yeah, the one, the one outside, yes. Yeah. So it was a called option play. Uh, we felt like, you know, they'd be bunching up in the middle as they had done it in the previous, uh, what, third and one yard line or something. They bunched it up. So we thought we could take it outside. And fortunately, it went to our side. Uh, were you looking back as you headed toward the flag or just hoping to make it? Well, I was just, I was thinking about first down, that's all. Playing for the hometown folks, brother. Yeah, I feel pretty good, especially to come home and have the kind of win that we had, you know. 
Uh, see anybody in the stands? I see a lot of people I knew. You know, a lot of people look familiar to me. I was glad to see them out. And I was Were glad you in the game on the uh, block field. Yeah, I was, but I was about. I was so tired. I just laid back and let them do it. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to you playing in, uh, in your hometown, guy? Uh, Phil, this is my first time and uh, play in Atlanta and. Uh, it's great. You know, it's a great feeling, especially you know, beat Georgia Tech. It's such a great rivalry between two schools. Hey, you're very big for a guard. How do you work on that? Uh, I just come up the ball as hard as I can and just hope for the best most time. <laughs> the Col the 84th time these two teams have gotten together, and it was quite a day. Warm too. It w well, it was hot. Uh, we had some <laughs> kids that got some cramps in the ball game, and, and uh, I know Georgia Tech had a lot of kids that go out of the game and. What's called gang tackling there, Coach? Well, you know, we played well again defensively, and we, we've given up a little more yardage than I'd like to give up, but we've not given up many points, and I guess that's, a, that's the name of the game. This is a but third down and short play coming it, here. Uh, gang tackling all over and good pursuit there and stop them for, for making a first down on our first possession. That's always important to, to get started defensively. We don't make a first down either the first time we get it. That's Lionel running the blast play inside, and come back on the sweep. We didn't get as much out of the sweep yesterday as we did against LSU, and they did have a good plan for it, and uh, we got away from it after, the, I think, his first drive here. We tried it a couple of times. We're coming back with the sweep here. A defensive end beat our tight end underneath a couple of times and got penetration, and, and we just didn't make a yardage off of it we, we've been making. So neither team can move on its first possession. Well, we punt to them, and... and uh, Allen Bolger did another good job yesterday kicking the football, and that punter did a great job kicking the ball. We had good coverage here, and I thought our coverage yesterday was good. We, we uh, didn't make anything happen with the punting game, and we've got to do that. There's a great lick right here. Well, not this one. This is a little later. And we had a, we had a, uh, uh, Bob uh, Harris was supposed to be covering that man, and he ran into Chris Martin, his man-to-man -man coverage, and as LeVette running inside, and they heard us with a little cutback play inside. They were running back, cutting back across the grain, knowing that our linebackers pursue fast. Donnie Humphrey coming up with a big play on the sack of the quarterback. Third and 14 now for Puts them. Puts them in a long yardage situation. I thought that quarterback did a good job yesterday coming in, heading up right here. Watch this. That is some kind of lick by Danny Skutak. So they this, punt. Danny is playing outstanding football right now and giving us great leadership and. Just uh, here's a nice run by Lionel James, Joe Sullivan pitching the ball. They get a late hit there and gives us 15 more yards. And Three big third down plays in a row right here on this drive. This is third and, and six. Joe's coming up with a big play for us. And, of course, he's throwing hitter Tommy Carroll and keeps the drive alive. And that's the name of the game when you're playing quarterback is to, to – control the football and come up with those kind of plays and Joe's done a super job of it. This is He's third pitching, and ten. Big play right here on the option pitching to, to Mike Edwards and I think everybody knows Mike's not a not a running back but he's sure doing a great job for us right now. Just in all phases of it. We have we've had trouble with motion and, and when we send motion the defense is checking their assignments and we've jumped off sides two or three times during the course of the year and and uh, we just got to concentrate more on the quarterback and not hear what the defense is saying. 31-yard field goal there by Al Del Greco. Now on their next possession, they can't move, and this guy can really punt. Well, I, he kicked the ball a long ways, but he got such great hang time on it to that coverage was done. And we didn't do a very good job of holding up and, and protecting Chris Woods there with our backs down deep. Come back, and I believe this is a... Is this the start of our touchdown drive? No, here? this is where you turn it over. All right, we turn this one over. On the option play, as O'Neill running inside, picks up three or four. And we're, you know, we're getting better, I think, but we're really not executing like, like we, we're capable of. And, and if, I think if we, we can perfect that in the, you know, in the weeks to come, even uh, we can control the football a little better. There's a big play by Danny Skutak and pressure and big sack and you huh. got to have those big plays on defense to to stop drives and they come back and a great play by them actually Greg Tut slipped and nearly fell down on that play I think he would have had coverage on him had he not not slipped on the AstroTurf but he did and that's part of it 
This is the second Auburn drive of John, the quarter. John Murphy's in it, in it quarterback now, and you're going to see, I think, uh, right here, Lionel breaks out of it with it with the longest run of the game. Great move right there. Great cut. Breaks the tackle right there. Picks up another seven, eight yards. Got us out of the whole big play and started our touchdown drive. First and ten now at the 45. Joe comes in and hits Ed West with a little dump pass. Picks up 15. Second and seven. Big run on Neil. I thought Ron ran better yesterday. He hadn't hadn't really run as well as he did in the first three games against Nebraska. And that was a big LSU. play. Third and three there. Well, we use Clayton on the option, and and he's got the great speed and quickness to outrun the linebackers. And and uh, as George Peoples running the blast gets outside and picks up about four. But we kind of using the quarterbacks to. Third and five there. Now you decide to go for it on fourth and three right here. Well, we, we felt like that we were going to have the option outside, and they, of course, all bunched up in on O'Neill on the, on the give, and Joe sidestepped with strong safety and was home free. You can see the, the strong safety kind of overruns. Joe goes right there and steps right inside of him right here, yeah. and then outruns him to the goal line. So Auburn goes ahead on the touchdown run by Sullivan, 10-7, with uh, three minutes left in the half. And a couple of... Great uh, play right here by Bob Harris on the sweep. Gets underneath the lead blocker and stops him for a yard or so loss. Here's another great play by Donnie Humphrey. I'm not so sure that Donnie didn't get that ball right there, and I, I felt like we got another one earlier, but uh, they didn't give them to us, so I guess we didn't get them. How about that, that cheerleader right there has got to have a lot of <laughs> intestinal fortitude to fall off of that backwards. She's got a lot of confidence in the, in the mates right there, catching her too. Coach, how about at just before the half there with the ball in there about the 10 to 12 yard line on fourth and three and you uh, decide to go for it rather than kick what would appear to be the easy field goal to make it 7-6? Well, I don't know, uh, Phil. It's probably, you know, probably wasn't very smart, but it worked and you know, we did that one time early in the year against TCU and got a touchdown out of it or got a big gain and set up a touchdown. And, uh, you know, we got we got confidence in our offense and, and uh, you line up and you kick a field goal, you miss it, and then you come way empty-handed too. So we had good field position and uh, we had moved the football and wasn't concerned. You know, we felt like we could move it and uh, that was our decision. It worked. and. So it's history now. So it's the right decision. Right? <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute. In 84 Georgia Tech-Auburn football games and 83 Rec Tech pajama parades. We'll see some of that. It was, by the way, uh, Pat Dye's first, and we'll get his reaction as, after we see our Auburn University feature. That was last Thursday. Well, you know, they, they uh, asked me to come over and speak at the pep rally, and I said, heck, you know, if I'm going to be over and, and, uh, and speak to the students, I think it'd be a good idea to let the players see it. Uh, they'd never seen one. So we worked out Thursday afternoon in the stadium and uh, had our normal Thursday practice, which is normally a light practice, just rehearsing everything, and uh, stopped practice for about 30 minutes and watched the parade, and I tell you, it was a... <laughs> it was a sight to behold. I've never seen anything like it. And uh, I felt like if, if if we put as much into the game Saturday as our students did that rec tech parade, then we'd be all right. But it was a lot of fun, and the kids enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it, and I think the students did too. And I think the football team being there added a little something to it. And we um, 
Anyway, we try to mix. We try to mix a little fun in with the work, and it um, doesn't hurt anybody. Isn't it amazing how many traditional rivals Auburn has? They just stack up there, you know. Well, we got some of them coming up. Too. <laughs> <laughs> we start the second half. Of course, it's ten to seven at uh, at halftime, and we'd move the ball well on offense and playing well on defense. Clayton Buford gets a good return right here, and um, gets the ball out to the, I guess, the thirty-five yard line, and. You know, people got such good kickoff men now that you hardly ever get a return. So they can't move and Tech can't move. This is Auburn's second drive of the third quarter. This is a good one. Here's Joe running the option and keeping it and picking up three or four yards. He come back. This is a third down play right now where we, Joe picks up the, makes the first down with a, off the option coming outside. Is just a straight handoff to the fullback up inside, and you've got to make them respect you inside, run the football before you can take it outside. This is third and five. That's a great play right here, and, and our coaching staff has done a good, super job with the, uh, our third down passing game. Alex Gibbs and Larry Blakeney you know, coming up with a little something different each week as Ron O'Neill running inside. Third and two right here. <clears throat> That's Clayton, Clayton Buford on the option again. You can see how strong Clayton is right there. He turned up Phil and just that extra yard there made a difference. Third and four. There's Lionel running inside. I don't know if we made it there, but it, it was awful close. It was, first down at the 12 now. Is No, this is the third down run, excuse right. me. Joe pitching to Lionel, he makes a nice run right here. Now you watch Lionel on this. Normally he'd get by that guy in the open field and watch him. He knows he should have gotten by him too. <laughs> I think he made his move a little too quick. Here comes Here's a touchdown. Great play right here by Joe, and that's the same play that we hit Lionel on, the same play that he hit Tommy Carroll on earlier. How did that guy get open in the corner, Coach? Well, the corner, you can see the corner come up to, to take Lionel. We just hit him on the third down play earlier, and, and uh, he came up to take him and left Mike open in the corner of the end zone, and of course, Joe read it perfectly and got the ball to him. We come back on, on defense now, and you can see we're getting a little pressure to the quarterback. And, Donnie Humphrey slaps the ball out of the quarterback's hand, and fortunately they come up with it. And uh, as the quarter starts now, they're backed up. We've got, you know, we've got momentum in the game right now, and this this nearly turned the game around for them. And I talked to Chris about it after after it happened, and he, it was a short punt, and he knew it was a good punt to return, and and we had some blockers right in front of him, and he took his eye off the ball just as split second and, and uh, you can't do that. It has a third down, fourth down play, I guess, third or fourth down play, and we get an offside penalty and they get a first down, and they're going to take this one on down now where we drive it down to where we block the field goal. There's a nice play on that part. It was second and long after they tackled, had a holding penalty. Tackled by Tim Drinkard. Third and four now. Tim's a walk on it we put on scholarship. Well, he was glad to be starting yesterday. Coach. Well, he's he's done a good job all year long, played all year long. We consider him a starter, even though he hadn't been starting. That was a nice play by Edmund Nelson. Second and eight at the nine. Right here, that's tackled by Chris Chris Martin, and you can see a lot of open Third players and five. getting around the football now. Stop him short. They decide to go on fourth and two at the five. They're going. Well, for they it. come they come with a pass, and we've got the blitz on, and quarterback does a great job of scrambling here and uh, gets the ball to LeVette, but they had two guys moving at the same time. One of them was in motion, and one of them tried to become stationary, and they get the five-yard penalty. Now, now they try to go for the field goal, which is a smart thing to do. And David King, great little cornerback from Fairhope, Alabama, blocked the field goal, and Chris Martin picks it up, bounced right up in his hands, and they Chris, Show a little speed here. I didn't know he could run that fast. I know that number nine can run. He's the same guy that caught the touchdown pass against us in the game earlier, and same one that caught the long pass against Alabama up in Birmingham that uh, in the fourth quarter drive. You got a good memory. <laughs> he's uh, he's also the one that Danny Skutak knocked his headgear off on the sideline a while ago. <laughs> but he's a good player. Three turnovers in a row right here. That's a, that's a big thrill for him. I know that's. Doug Taylor walked on from Opelika, and Doug is just a great competitor. And here's Clayton Buford running the option. We get the pitch a little bit out front, and the ball takes a weird bounce, and we don't come up with it. They recover the fumble, and we're going to come right back with a 
Another interception here. This one by Zach Hardy. Ball's tipped right in Zach's hand. He turns it, returns it 24 yards, gets some good blocks here. And Zach Hardy was one of our captains, and Zach is getting better each week and just been real good for our football team. And after being out a year, and I'm just thrilled to death for him. And he's it's a just, great story. Uh, You're right. Here's a touchdown drive by the freshman. That's Ken Hobby. We've got uh, Terry Randall and John Pearson and Vance Pike. It was a naked reverse. Coach Gibbs made that call. A great one down on the goal line. Terry Moore. That's Clayton Buford. I think Clayton nearly got that one in the end zone right there. And Pretty heady putting the ball in the end zone as he fell. As long as he doesn't fumble it. <laughs> That's Tim James going in for the touchdown. Right here at the end of the game, we got to play. I guess we played everybody on the team. We either got him in on a kickoff or something. There's Terry Moore jumping up and down and having a good time. And these kids have worked all it. That's our second unit there, and half of them are freshmen. Over half of them, and you know we don't have but actually seven upperclassmen in our offensive line. So you know our backup people are freshmen. And Mr. Allen Manley, he was actually got hurt in the JV game, and he would have been out there too. A lot of Georgia boys got a chance to go home see the folks and the girlfriends I last night, didn't they? Kind of felt for Coach Curry because his team had played well and, and he had them well prepared. That coaching staff had done a good job and the kids played hard and, and uh, the thing just turned around for them there on the block field goal and the game was much closer than the score indicated. All right. We'll return and talk about Mississippi State in just a minute. Coach, nobody has four tougher games at the end of the year than Auburn and Mississippi State is next up. Well, uh, Bill, it certainly is. I'd like to say something about our seniors on our football team right now. They've done a great job uh, providing leadership for our team and hanging in there with us through the tough losses that we went through. And, of course, we're going to need some strong leadership down this last half of the season, and uh, I'm just looking forward to playing them. Mississippi State has got a great football team. They're going to be probably right. come in one of the top ten teams in the country. Tremendous challenge for our coaches, players, fans. Uh, I'd like to challenge our fans and our student body to to fill that stadium up next week and get that Auburn spirit going and see if they can't add a little emphasis to the game and help us pull this one out. It's going to be a, a very physical game. Uh, they run the same type of offense that we do. And uh, it should be a great football game. It should be a war. And, uh, you know, it's one that you can, it's a game that you can learn a great deal from that uh, you can carry with you the rest of your life. That'll be Saturday, Jordan Hare, and we'll have the replay on Sunday. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye is a presentation of WSFA TV Sports. has been brought to you by The Colonial Company. The Macon... experience to make us all better people.
praise your name. Amen. <laughs> something else about you remember I started off in August trying to trying to get you to play together and to love one another and care about each other you know if you don't have that you can't you can't survive in this old world of ours you can't make things happen like happened today I don't know whether we got any chance to go to a bowl game or not I do know this you're a hell of a lot better football team than a lot of teams that's going to bowls. But I'm going to tell you this. I think we got a chance to go. In fact, I know we got a chance to go. It's going to take more than what we've already done. Next week is a mighty, mighty big week. Getting ready to play North Texas State. It'll be a big week. Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Boyd Nick is fast to Red Phillips. Is good for the touchdown. The 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Tucker Fredrickson. Solomon to throw. Straight back in the pocket. Throws it for Beasley. He's got it in the open. At the 20. Touchdown, Auburn. It is not. It is not. It's going to score. Brought to you by the Colonial Company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn 14, the University of Florida 12. If you keep plugging, something good's going to happen, Coach. Well, <coughs> excuse me, Bill. <laughs> I, I lost my voice yesterday, but uh, you know, our players have deserved better all year, I thought. And the coaching staff has done a great job, and I'm just happy yesterday for the fans and the student body and the people that have been so loyal to, to the team all Paul and of course the players themselves that just you know, they just keep getting up here week after week and going out there and laying the guts on the line and and you know yesterday is a result of what happens if you you know just continue to play hard and have faith in your plan something good's gonna happen to you and uh, you know we still got a long way to go before we'll be a good football team if we can even be a good football team this year. We're certainly strong in some areas of our game. In other areas, we're we're just we're struggling, but we're working at it. And you know, I hope we can improve those areas before you know before we play next week, Georgia, Alabama at the end of the season. But um, mighty proud of them, and it was uh, kind of kept our hopes of fulfilling some of our goals later in the year. If we can. Uh, just add a little something to what we already got. You know, who knows? Some good, sure enough, could be happening. Down the road. Let's go into the Auburn dressing room now, and we'll talk to just the uh, Florida players uh, who battled the university from their home state yesterday. Can you go home? Please let me go home. Go home <laughs> give, me a, give me a ticket. <laughs> give me a ticket right you now. You guys took over the game early. How were you getting back there? Well, uh, we just were rushing a couple of people. We had a couple of stunts going on. We gave them a lot of different looks, and uh, they couldn't pick us up. I tell you what, I can uh, live easy for a year now. <laughs> Not worry about them rubbing it in. I can talk a little trash here for a while. Your little brother who's on the who's on Florida team didn't dress today, huh? No, he separated his shoulder this Monday, so I think he's out for the season. So I think he was in the stands. I hope he was cheering me on. I don't know. Your family was here? Yes, sir. Hey, it feels great, man, to be down. I can go home this Christmas and smile, you know. The majority of the time, when I got on the corner, Fake the pitch, he kind of slid out with the pitch mask. I just turned on up. Did you think you were going to score on the kickoff? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> I'm still waiting on it. You're going to get one, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to get one. Well, I was really down when he was going to kick it, but when I seen him say no good, I just screamed for joy, you know. We don't want, you know. Well, how do you think it's down there in Pensacola now, Chuck? Oh, yeah. I hope they love it down there, you know. I love it up here, you know. You were, uh, you were trying to block the uh, last field goal try. Uh, yes, how sir. close were you? Uh, well, I, I came pretty close, but I just wanted him to pressure it because he was kicking from his right back this way, you know. And I, and I wanted to get on the right and come from the right side, but coach, you know, told me to get on the left and try to, you know, pressure him. We came from both sides. The Colonial Company. 
65,000 in Jordan Hare yesterday, and Auburn lost the toss. Coach. Well, well, for the seventh time out of eight ball games this year, we lost it, but it doesn't bother us. We kicked it off and see three three great plays on defense early in the game. And, uh, you know, Phil, I believe our defense is getting better. You know, Donnie Humphrey here, first play of the game, we got a little stun inside and got penetration through for about a five-yard loss. I counted the first four plays on defense were made by down linemen. Well, Coach Hall has done a great job, and he's got some ability there, and they're playing like it. There's Donnie Humphrey again. Thing that you can see about Donnie and, of course, Edmund Nelson playing the other tackle, and Dow Altman makes some great plays. Here's Dow getting pressure on him. Donnie's running him out here, and Edmund Nelson makes a play. Donnie and Edmund and Dow not going to let the rest of the teammates play with him, I don't guess. <laughs> Had to call him for a little help for long. We come back right now. This is the start of our touchdown drive. We started Joe Sullivan, come here with Clayton Buford. And we had a reason for doing this. Of course, they knock them all down on the corner. And Clayton just a matter of running and how fast he can run, how far he's going to go. Clayton's got to start handling the ball a lot more careful than he is. Carrying that thing in one hand, he needs to tuck it away when he gets in that traffic. Here's Hobby handing off to to George Peoples, picks up a couple of yards. Joe hey, comes Joe? back. Joe comes back and hands off to George for a couple of yards. And Hobby comes in and, and throws a nice crossing route. Actually, it's a flare. And back to Mike Edwards, puts the ball down at the eight yard line. And uh, we, we kind of just drive it on in from here. See this pass. The three, using the three quarterbacks was, uh, you plan to do that? a little face mask penalty right there. Sure. Could have, but I don't think he saw it. There's Joe handing off to, you can see that offensive line. Uh, Phil, our offensive line had by far the best day they've had all year. I mean, you can see them coming off of football and just mashing them right there. And we just take this one right on in. And Clayton Buford comes in right here, likes to slip down with quickness and speed, gets it in the end zone for our first touchdown. See it again here. Good block right there by Ed West. You can really high old pulling around, pull it off inside. Clayton hits the seam, and we said nothing up. You know, the thing about the uh, way we played the quarterbacks like that, we, we wanted to play Clayton the quarterback some last week, and Coach Gibbs said, well, Coach, if we play them the first three snaps of the game, then we will have them in the ball game. We won't be scared to play them. So that's what <laughs> our plan was. Ball was tipped right there by Edmund Nelson. And Third and ten here. And then we get pressure on him, Quincy Williams got him back screen. You don't get to see a great reaction right there. Isn't that super... Uh, pursuit from our down lineman on the screen. You got Donnie Humphrey and and uh, Edmund Nelson both in on the tackle over there. Here, Quince is running out of pocket again. That quarterback is a great athlete. He got great speed. You can see him running by our pursuit right there, and he get hit on the sideline by Mark Dorney. I think that could have been Mark's brother, Dale. They hold him right here. Yeah, it could have. That's right. You see his defense bow up and stop him here. That's Dow Altman, first guy to him, pulls him to kick a field goal, and he kicks it. Brian Clark uh, kicks 30 yarder there. I watched that guy warm up yesterday. I always like to watch a kicker from the opposing team's warm up. And here's a big play in the ball game right here. We just didn't keep our eye on the ball. Fair caught it, knew what to do, worked on doing it in practice, and just didn't get it executed. And big play for them. They take it over 30 yard line back on offense again. Here's a nice play by them. Fullback Jones is a great, great football player. Complete the pass for first down. This is a third Back. and four play where they hold him. We, uh, again, keep him out of the end zone. They go for the field goal and make it again. Talking about Clark, a field goal guy. I watched him warm up, and I tell you, he was deadly from anywhere on the field. And just, you know, I just, when we fumble at the end of the game, I just said, well, it's over. We'll make it. And the Lord, he did. As Hobby coming back on the the option keeping the football and his handing off on him. Played a Ron O'Neill. I think Ron might have played a little better yesterday. He hadn't played very well since the Tennessee ball game. As Lionel running in, he can get in a little old crack you know, for a rat to run through. 42 yard line now. He again stepping out of tackles and he just, it's a tiny. Hobby was able to get on the corner in the first half very well. They well, shut that down later. Yeah, well, we, we, I don't think it was that so much. We just didn't execute quite as well as we did. They came with a little more pressure on the corner, but we should have been able to hit the football. As Ken, again, keeping on the counter option, and 
spoon it on down. At the 26th. Hit the man. fumble right here. Now we just didn't get a good execution between the fullback and the quarterback. Didn't look like the fullback put a soft squeeze on the ball like he's supposed to and, and didn't take it. Sometimes the fullback may read the thing rather than the quarterback. The quarterback's got to be a great play right there by Greg Carr. Greg Carr and, and uh, Ronnie Ballou both had big plays in the game yesterday. Good pressure on the quarterback. Fine play. Look at that right there. Body's flying through the air. There's <laughs> they going after him. Bob Harris and, Third and, ten. and our defense is having a lot of fun playing. Again, you can see the pressure on him. Donnie Humphrey and Zach Harden. Here comes Edmund. Throws it to a guard. <laughs> he can't do Tackle that. Somebody and they get a 15 yard this penalty guy plus loss very well. He really did a good well. job, but he didn't punt as good as I got did. He sure did. the ball average 45 yards on five kicks, I think. Good return right there by David King. That was out Pick. without any help, too. And we had the block on, I think. Mm -hmm. First and ten. Here's Ken again on the corner. He just face mask, picks up another 15 yards. And uh, I think we take this one this in the score. Drive, right. uh, this is a great run right here by Little Lionel. Gets it down close on the sweep. We come back on the sweep again. He takes it inside to the one. Going that was that, a big play. That was going third and three. That, going for that goal line. And O'Neill scores on the next play right here. You look at that offensive line, come off of football, get them walled off, and he just walks into the end zone. Shoot. See it again. They just wall it off over on the right side. Well, you know, I thought I got, I got on the offensive team several times in the second half because we weren't moving the football, but I think it's just a matter of execution. It wasn't the fact that we didn't have effort. It wasn't the fact that the offensive line wasn't coming off the football and getting moved because they did. It was just was not smooth operation for the overall execution and, of course, six turnovers as a result of that. Okay. That guy right there is an outstanding player for Florida sure that fullback. Jones. Second and he gained four a lot here. of yardage for him, but he just, you know, they couldn't get it when they had to have it. They're at the 43 now. Nice play by Dow Altman and uh, Mark Normandy. And he is, again, good play right there by Jeff Jackson. You tackle that guy one-on-one -on -one in open field, you've done a pretty good day's work. Here comes the turnover. Watch Dow Altman strike him on the pass reception. That's pursuit. You know, Dow Altman is nose guard. He's out there making that tackle on the sideline. That's because, you know, you know why that happened? Because Coach Hall makes them sprint to the football every time it's thrown on the field. They got to get to the football, wherever it's thrown on the field. And that's reason you get those plays like that. Jeff Jackson got the fumble and now going the other way. Well, we had a chance right here to put the game away, but we just are young. We don't have that killer instinct and whatever it takes to, you know, we just got to, got to grow and mature. You get this, you smell that goal line, you put it in there, and there's Lionel running here, and the ball's on the ground. Oh, that mercy, you just makes coaches grow old in a hurry. <laughs> and lose their voices. <laughs> I guess. First and 10 going the other way, and uh, now at the 27 yard line, Florida trying to get something going. Again, here. you can see pressure. You know, he just didn't have any time to throw the football. Well, he had a little time, but he was always had somebody in his face. And I tell you, Peace is a great quarterback. No question about that. Again, you can see people around him. He completes the passes when he's got to. They're at the Auburn 43 on this next play. You can see when it's, it's a great play on their part. We had the ball intercepted here, and that guy just kind of kind of twisted it away from Bob Harris. Looked like when he came down, he had a little more leverage on the ball than Bob did. I know that he did not fight him for it. His body position. They throw it a little flat pass, and Bob Harris knocks him out of bounds, and that number 20's got great speed for Florida. Third and four right here. This is a big play. Stop the drive. Uh, they throw the little flare pass to the inside receiver. I guess that eight, is that eight? Is that Faulkner? Yeah. A great tight end. He didn't play a lot yesterday. So they kick another field goal. That was a big play in the ball game, I tell you. You know, they take it down and do that right before the half, and we go out 14 to nine ahead instead of 14 to six. And, uh, and the touchdown know, just, puts you ahead. Well, that's right. And, the, and of course, we had a chance to salt it away. And we, I guess we turned the ball over what, five times. Five, the first, times. five would, times in the first I half. I never believe that against Florida, Auburn could turn the ball over five times and lead. And have the lead. I wouldn't either. But um, we did. And, and of course, that's a compliment to our defense. 
And the other thing too is that we turn the ball over deep in you know deep in their territory. That makes instead of on our way into the field, and that was a big big factor. But you don't like to turn it over any time. We'll be back in just a minute. On Friday night, Auburn University President Dr. Hanley Funderburk announced an ambitious fundraising program for Auburn. Greatness. Now Auburn needs new tools to maintain its greatness. The Auburn Generations Fund will help do this. It is vital to our future. The investment I ask you to make and help achieve is not small. Through the Auburn Generations Fund, we seek as a minimum, and I'm confident of success as I announce this goal, we seek no less than $61,733,000. We will achieve this goal, the largest of any public university in the Southeast. This is our challenge. We together will achieve this goal. All right. Uh, Coach, I'd like to announce the uh, Auburn JV game with Marion Institute will be Friday at Marion at 4 p.m. That's a little unusual start for them, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Well, we want to do that so the kids will have some kids dressing out on homecoming that's going to play in that game on Friday afternoon. Uh, Phil, I'd like to thank all the people that have written me. You know, I've gotten hundreds of letters from fans all over the state and people that watch this show and but uh, fans are just coming to the games um, expressing appreciation to what the team has done even though we haven't uh, won a loss record but just the way the, the class that they just played and, and the way they played and so forth and uh, I appreciate the letters I wish you'd write them to the players because they're the one doing it <laughs> and uh, but it's been a lot of fun and Again, you know, I've said that this football team has been more fun than I would have ever expected a football team to be. You've said special on several occasions. Well, they are special. They are. And uh, they always will be because this is, uh, is a kind of a cross-section of a lot of different personalities on this football team, and each one of them has a special meaning to me. And uh, some of them are seniors, some of them are juniors, some of them are freshmen. But uh, they're going to give us a foundation and it'll be a solid one to build a program on. We'll move back into the second half and see some of the great Auburn University band performing <coughs> and in just a minute coach you're going to see uh, uh, a buddy of yours Rowdy Gaines receive his huge trophy as the Southeastern Conference Athlete of the Year. Rowdy's uh, well, you know, outstanding Phil, swimmer. I think that uh, Auburn the setting there the community and the little town and the university itself lends itself to an athlete being able to reach greatness academically and in whatever field he's playing in, whether it's swimming or golf or tennis or football or basketball or whatever. We don't have any ass right of that to get in this trophy. We don't have the outside pressures and outside influences and the distractions at Auburn that uh, would take anything away from a kid reaching his ultimate goal in academics or in, or in football or whatever. That's the reason it's such a great place to recruit to our student body, our players. You know, they just have themselves and the relationship that they develop over a four-year period of time is unbelievable. They start the second half, and you see that Jones running football, and of course, we got a lot of folks trying to get there, and they break containment zone. I guess that's probably the longest run of the game. Peace pulls the ball down, had them covered good, and pulls it down, and has Coach Hall's crowd, Altman, and... Here comes a big play. Yeah, so, as Donnie Humphrey, watch Donnie accelerate right here. You know, I tell you what, that, that piece, I don't know how fast Donnie can run. He ran him down, but piece, I know, runs 4-7 on the 40, and that's pretty good speed. We're showing defensive plays in the second half because it was a real offense. struggle. We didn't have much offense. I don't know. <laughs> Third and 20 here. Oh, goodness, somebody threw a lasso around Donnie then. <laughs> lasso. Oh, but that's a fine play by Bob Harris breaking on the football, and... Here's another big play in the second half. Defensive yeah, play. Yeah, a little twist the... under in there that gave him some problems. This was great play right here by Ronnie Ballou. Uh, you're talking about a game of inches. Now that tackle was made. I'm in a solid jaw-to-jaw -jaw tackle out in the open field. Kept him from making a first down. It forced him into a punting situation and had 
and give us a football. Here they go again in Auburn territory this time. All right. As Jones picking up about three yards and we're we're coming on rushing the pass. It looks as a is this a, is this a fourth right. down play right Third here? and one coming right here now. This third is third and one. And one. You're gonna see great penetration right there by Donnie Humphrey and, and Edmund Nelson on third and one. They, they met in the backfield actually and stop him for no game. And then the next play, the fourth down play here, we stop him is the biggest play in the football game. Change a quarter. Right there, piece I don't believe got back to the line of scrimmage. But the penetration on this particular play was by the whole front six, which was made up of the two inside people were uh, Ben Thomas and, and uh, Dow Altman. Fine play right here by Dow Altman. Quincy Williams hit him first and bounced off, and Dow finished him off. But uh, Dow Altman and Ben Williams on the fourth down play, and Donnie Humphrey and Edmund Nelson and Quincy Williams. And I don't know if it was Zach, Zach Hardy or uh, Jeff Jackson in there. Fine play right there by Tim Drinkin. Tim, of course, is a walk on. I get it. Was that Mark Dominey? I thought it was Tim. Maybe it was Mark. Here's a play right here that was a big one in the game and stopped him on a touchdown drive again by. They had a scoot tack and they had to kick another field goal. So that was made it 12 to 14, and we come back here. With five All we got to do is make, you know, three or four first down the game's over with. Pick up one right here. Fine running by Ian Hobby. They see don't it. have any timeout, so if see we can a run a great the clock. run by little Lionel. And then we take it outside, and you see the fumble. If we get the ball pitched, then I think he's going to make a first down. But then they got a hand on the football, knocked it back, and set the stage for defense to have to bow up again. And they stop have enough them. time to score here on the ground. Well, if you know, I, I, I think if they were smart in doing what they did, I mean, they got a field goal kicker that's already kicked four, but the defense comes on and stops them, and they just had a little too much hook on it. I'm glad he doesn't kick like it. I hit a golf ball because he had a slice and it probably been dead down the middle. But uh, I tell you what, it was a happy time. I, you know, I wish it uh, a lot of fun there. It's been a long time coming, but it was a big win for us, Phil. There's no question about it. Florida's got a fine football team. Coach Pell and the staff done a great job of getting them ready to play, and they did a, you know, had a good scheme. and. Uh, they didn't back off any. I think it was probably one of the most physical games that we played all year long. I think it was just as physical as the Mississippi State game. They are I don't think I don't think they're quite as good as Mississippi State, and I really don't think we played quite as good as we did against Mississippi State. But uh, played well enough to win, and again, a lot of credit's got to go to our coaching staff. They've done a super job in just staying with the players and the players, you know, getting back up from week to week and keeping their head up. And, we got a long way to go, but uh, we're going to work at trying to get there. Okay, we'll return in just a minute after this from the Colonial Company. Next week, homecoming, North Texas State. Phil, this is the biggest challenge we've had all year long, getting ready to play North Texas State. There's a lot of distractions involved around homecoming. Georgia will be the game of next week. Our people will be looking, our fans will be looking ahead to that. And if, and if we don't get our minds back right on North Texas State right now and our student body and our fans talking about North Texas State and getting ready to play them, then we are, we'll are setting ourselves up to get beat next week at homecoming. Okay, Coach, take your cough medicine. We'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. Football Review with Coach Pat Dye has been brought to you by the Colonial Company.
Not a lot we can do about this one today. Forget about it. Learn from it. Be a bigger and a better and a stronger man coming back from it. We're very, very lucky to have a great opportunity in the last football game on national television against Alabama. It's got all of the, everything in the world riding on the football game. It really and truly would be better than any football game that you could go to. Because everybody in America <coughs> would be looking at you. Everybody in America that cares anything about college football will be watching you on the 28th of November. <laughs> Let's make sure that this loss doesn't take anything away from our preparation, from your concentration, and take anything away from you ending up with a winning season. You can make it all happen on the 28th. Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Boy, Nick, is fast to Red Phillips. is good for the touchdown. The 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Tucker Fredrickson. Solomon to throw. Straight back in the pocket. Throws it for Beasley. He's got it in the open. At the 20. Touchdown, Auburn. It is not. It is not. It's going to score. He's going to score. Brought to you by the Colonial Company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, Athens, Georgia, the largest crowd ever to see a football game in the state of Georgia. A great day for the game of college football. 24-13 Georgia, though, Coach. Well, the score didn't end up like we'd like for it to, but I feel the, the game was hard fought and on both sides of the football. Georgia's got a great football team, and they're well coached, and they were well prepared, had a good plan for us, uh, particularly offensively. And... Uh, the difference in the game was uh, three turnovers to one. Georgia made one mistake with the ball. They had one interception, and we turned it over three times, and one of them kept us from, I think, scoring a touchdown. We fumbled on the 10-yard line going in, and uh, two out in the middle of the field that set up Georgia touchdowns. So that was the difference in the ball game. It was an 11-point game, and, you know, I thought our coaches, in fact, I know our coaches did a great job in preparation for the Georgia game. They, we had an excellent plan offensively and defensively. We knew they were a talented football team that uh, had a lot of weapons. And uh, the Georgia, you know, Baloo at quarterback did a great job of getting the ball to the tight ends and Lindsey Scott in key situations. And of course, Herschel is, a, you know, probably the best football player in America. I think so. Uh, it was very hard fought, and I know you must be encouraged by the way your team moved the football, though, because the execution was there. Well, you know, we've said all along that if we execute, uh, you know, you can't stop the option, and we executed yesterday, and our backs blocked well, and uh, the quarterbacks did a good job of reading, and we just moved the football. I think we had 282 yards on the ground, and that's, you know, I think a lot more than anybody's gained on Georgia this year, and uh, a lot of credit goes to our offensive football team. You know, we've had a situation where got a lot of young people and playing freshman quarterbacks along with Joe and just, uh, you know, I'm proud of them. And, well, you should be. <coughs> now, we went to the dressing room, of course, after the game, and most of the talk was uh, actually not about this one, but about the one coming up, as you'll see. Well, they can just hurt you so many ways. You know, we tried to stop Hirsch on the run, and they hit us with a pass, and we tried to load up on the pass. Hirsch would break free on us. Georgia's so effective with the sprint draw with Hirsch, and uh, it was kind of like when they run that, it was kind of like freezing everybody. That's why Buck had a time to get on the corner. So, uh, you know, we can't make the mistakes we made against Georgia. We can't. Ain't no way for us to beat a team like that. Alabama is, is like the biggest game of the year, but for us, besides this Georgia game, you know, we just get out to practice next week and the week after, you know come back and put it together on them. You got one more? Yeah, Alabama, and uh, we'll be ready for them. 
one more, and uh, we're going to approach it just like we approached the first 10. I think it's going to be an exciting game. I think we can play with them, but, you know, we're going to have to have a great week of preparation. And I feel like if we play as good as we did today without the fumbles, <clears throat> I think we can move the ball on Alabama. Oh, yeah, we ain't never been on national television since I've been there, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I guess it's about the biggest game that both of us have ever been associated with coming up. Yeah, it'll be big because the next one, playing Alabama, who's got a fine football team, and you know, we've got a lot of friends over there, and it'll be awful nice if we come out on top. Does TV matter? No, it's, it's Alabama. The Colonial Company, helping you live better today and bringing news and music to your life. The Colonial Company, good company for your future. This is the home the Bensons thought they couldn't afford. Today, I sold it to them. You see, I work for a better homes and garden. Five Saturdays of this Auburn, Georgia contest, and coach, I don't think many could have been uh, uh, on a prettier day. Well, it was absolutely gorgeous and a great day for a football game, and I didn't realize it was the largest crowd in the history of the stadium over there. I knew there was a lot of people there. It was full. I didn't see any empty seats. Georgia takes its first drive, and it was an absolutely magnificent drive for them, and he just pecked the way out. I believe this, this drive took 20, 20 plays. plays. Yeah. It was a great play by Bob Harris and, and Chris Martin. We had worked on this. And Second and goal with the five. Out to Herschel inside, and we stopped him at the two-yard line and forced a field goal. They come back and try to throw the ball here and get good pressure and hold the receivers up at the line of scrimmage. He comes back and barely misses K right there for what could have been a touchdown. We had good pressure on them. They kick the field going to go ahead three to nothing. 20 play drive, 76 <coughs> yards there. We come right back and, and uh, have a nice drive and ends up in a missed field goal. This is a first down play, first scrimmage play. Well, we felt like we had to <coughs> continuously change up the formations against Georgia, and, and uh, which we did, and Coach Gibbs did a great job of calling plays in the game and gave him some problems, and here Joe is pitching the line on Picks up 12, 15 yards on this run. I was upset at himself for stepping out of bounds. Third and five <laughs> at the Georgia 44 now. Third and five at the Georgia 44. Here's a nice play by Joe throwing back to, to Chris Wood. We'd hit that dump pass to the tight end on several occasions and felt like a free safety would be jumping the dump pass and we'd throw back against the corner and it worked to perfection the first time we, we ran it. Come back with motion, just hand it off inside. That's it. Ed Dubose running and Ed, of course, is a senior and contributed to it. This is a big play by that great tackle, Payne, right here. He stops us for no gain on third and short. We come back and, and have a miscommunication and get called for delay a game and forced to kick a field goal and miss it. Georgia comes back on offense. Nice play right there by Scott Riley and Ronnie Ballou. Second and seven. On delay. Here's Herschel. Can't find any running room. Tackled by Quincy Williams and Edmund Nelson. Third down, seven now. <coughs> we get a sack on the quarterback here. Good pressure by Quincy Williams and Ben Thomas, big freshman from, from down in Georgia. And I think Ben played well yesterday. He was excited about playing against Georgia. And some of the folks down in Ashburn told him he couldn't tackle Herschel, but I saw one time I know he was <laughs> tackling by himself. Here's a nice play by Joe Sullivan. It was third and nine situation. Joe couldn't find anybody open, pull the ball down and picked up a key first down. This is an 89-yard drive for touchdown here, and we mix up the quarterbacks. And nice run by Ken Hobby on the option. Good blocking by Mike Edwards. 48-yard line of Georgia. <coughs> Offensive line is coming off good block out there by, uh, I believe that was David Jordan and, and uh, Greg Zip coming off the ball. Ron O'Neill, 26-yard run. Now it's third and three at the 15 of Georgia now. Pitch to Edwards, <coughs> getting that first down. And Mike has been a great contribution to our football team this year. Pitching to Lionel, and the reason I say that is because he's a natural split in, but he's playing halfback to the best of his ability. He came up with some big plays yesterday. He's aggressive. He's a fine blocker. Here's a great play by Ken Hobby, pitching the ball off of nearly off the ground, and Mike Edwards takes it in for a touchdown. Lionel James had a good block, and so did Carroll out there on the uh, corner. Here's that pitch. 
Once he got the ball to, uh, it was a touchdown once he got it to Mike. <clears throat> Mike is one of the most unselfish people that I've ever been around. He just, you know, everywhere we've played him, he played done a great job. And here's a fine play by Edmund Nelson on a sweep to Herschel. Momentum is with Auburn now. <clears throat> here's a play that uh, Baloo comes up short on. He didn't come up short on many yesterday. Sweep to Herschel. Fine play right here by Skutak and Bob Harris. Georgia gets called for clipping. We refuse a penalty. We've got great field position here, and this is a, one of the fumbles that hurt us in the ball game. And picked, Ron O'Neill had picked up seven, eight yards and turned the ball over, and Georgia scores in two plays and really turned the football game around. Herschel runs inside for a couple of yards. Nice play by Edmund Nelson, Donnie Humphrey. And Here's the fake to him now. Norris Brown's got 4 6 speed, and the cornerback just bit on the fake to Herschel inside, but Georgia's offense can make you do some of those things. They got the easy touchdown out of it. Hill Payne again sacks Joe Sullivan for five yard loss, and we kind of lost momentum in the game right here. Joe's running the option. It stopped short of a first down. We had to punt the football to Georgia. Allen Bollinger had a good day <coughs> kicking the ball. My coverage was good, and the snaps were kind of low. But I work on that between that and Alabama because if we don't, Alabama block one. Here's a reverse coming back and had it pretty well played. Jeff Jackson forced him back inside and get a host of people there. Dow Altman and Vernon Blacker. Here's Herschel breaking some tackles. And what great ability. Just. Just he is, a, he is truly a, a great player, and so, <clears throat> as Baloo hitting Clarence K, one of Georgia's three outstanding tight ends. We've got three of them, and it's super football player. A great play right there by tackle by Chris Martin, and we had Herschel falling backwards a little yesterday. He doesn't fall backwards much, but he's so big and strong and so fast. Pressure here by Danny Skutak, and Baloo does a great job of getting the ball to K for the touchdown. And we had to blitz on man-to-man -man coverage and tight end actually released outside and just ran away from our strong safety and we just couldn't quite get there. It was a key drive in the game for Georgia and put them up 17-7. to seven. And again, we don't like to give up anything right before the half because it's lets Georgia go in with the momentum. And, uh, but we did and we never quite recovered from it. 17-7 <laughs> at the half. We'll be back in just a moment. Pat, one of the unique things about this rivalry is that it is between schools of different states, yet uh, there are so many players who uh, come from Georgia on both teams. I believe you took probably 30 or so over there yesterday. Well, we, we recruit strongly in Georgia because we're so close to the state of Georgia, and, and uh, it's been that way for years. And we'll sign some good football players out of Georgia this year, did last year. And, uh, of course, Ken Hobbins from Georgia, Ben Thomas. Tommy Carroll, you know, just a lot of them. Pat Dye, <coughs> right. was it any difference going back? Not really. We, I thought the game yesterday, uh, Phil was as clean and hard fought as it anyone that, that I've been around. To, uh, and it was you know, I, I, you know, a great college football game. Uh, you know, Georgia, I think, is personnel-wise, is a, you know, it was an outstanding football team. And I thought that our kids fought hard and, and uh, actually had a chance to win the football game. I see that uh, the band's coming on, and Sue told me on the way home last night that Auburn won the halftime show, so <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Dr. Walls and the band have done a great job all year long. Well, they're fans, too. You know what? They are fans. They, they uh, said many times, nothing like that Auburn spirit, and it's just fun to be a part of it. We uh, Auburn folks filled up one end zone in the corner down there, but they were, they were, they were heard. Well, the Georgia folks will fill up ours next year. They sure will. <laughs> <laughs> they sure will. The, uh, I thought that, uh, you know, at the half, it, we felt like if we could get the ball game close going into the fourth quarter, right. that, um, you know, that we'd have a chance. The wishbone has a, has a tiring effect on the defense, and you can see that we move the ball very well in the fourth quarter. We got it down there twice and fumbled once and got it in once. This drive showed promise. We started started the second half. They kicked off to us, and we had a nice drive and turned it over out at midfield, which, you know, really hurt us. 
He pitched to Mike Edwards and uh, picked up first down play here, I guess. And <coughs> George Peoples ran really well yesterday. And of course, George is a senior and done a great job for us this year. Here's Ken going back to pass, and this is a key play in the game. Actually, Pat Arrington, our offensive tackle, uh, hits the ball right here. Ken's trying to step up in the pocket and pressure from Gilbert. George's fine defensive end forces a pet back into to Ken and knocks the ball out of his hand. And Georgia gets it and drives it in to score from here. As Baloo throwing a great touch on the football, throwing the lens of Scott, the coverage wasn't that bad. He just threw it right in the crack. He had to throw it in. Fine play right there by Donnie Humphrey and, and Ben Thomas on, on that fullback, Stewart. Yeah, Going I would, back I would again, think. Herschel, short yardage play, tackled by Zach Hardy and Chris Martin. Here's a, another fine throw and catch by Ballou and Lindsey Scott. Those two will be gone next year, thank goodness. <laughs> and here's Hershel going, going over the top for the touchdown. He didn't get it in that much, but he did get it in, and of course he's got the leaping ability of a kangaroo. <laughs> he's he's strong. I don't. Herschel nope. is different from any running back that I've seen, and it he's got a kind of a he just kind of paces himself and sees his opening and explodes. And Lou coming back and went to the well one time too often. Fine interception by Bob Harris. Puts us in field position, I guess, around that 30 yard line. And we have a nice drive here and take it down and end up fumbling on the 10 yard line. Good play by Ken Hobby. Picks up the first down, gets out of bounds. Of course, we're in the fourth quarter now. Early, <coughs> early in the fourth. Ed DuBose. Running inside, and you can, you're going to see our offensive line coming off of football and getting movement on the Georgia offensive line and pitching back to Willie Howell. Willie is from Thomaston, Georgia, and Willie moved over from defensive secondary. He's done a fine job for us at running back here. He's pitching back to Mike Edwards, and <clears throat> Mike picks up a, another first down. We get it on down around the 25 yard line, and George Peoples just makes a fine run. Offensive line did a great job coming off of football. Gets hit hard right here, and that's, you can see the guy's headgear right on the mm -hmm. football, and we have a little controversy on the officials. One of them is pointing to the Georgia goal line, and another one says it goes the other way, and that young lady right there is... She says it all. <laughs> she doesn't like what they ended up with the decision, but our defense is still playing hard, and... We're going to hold them here. They move the ball a little bit, but Herschel running inside, tackled by Dennis Collier. <clears throat> Third and five. Here's pressure again. Ballou ends up throwing the football away, and I think that was intentional grounding the football, and so we get the ball back on a punt, and there's a nice drive for the touchdown right here. Ken Hobby is pitching back to Lionel James, and Lionel is really the the only running back that has, you know, running ability on the outside. The rest of them run and, and aggressive and but just, you know, don't have the quickness and the moves that Lionel has out there to give us a, the big play running the ball outside. They, they they run hard and they pick up yardage, but they don't have the ability to make folks miss them in the open field like he does. Here's Clayton Buford running on a just a predetermined sweep, comes outside, and Clayton is going to have to start carrying that ball a little safer. This is a third down <clears> play right we here. Put the two freshman quarterbacks together there. Clayton Buford at halfback, send him in motion, and Hobby hits him for a nice first down. Get the ball down, and Lionel, nice block. Ken's got to learn how to carry the ball a little safer himself. Fourth and seven right here, another big, big play. Big play, pitching it ball. You can see again, getting the ball to Lionel, and he picks up a first down. We contemplated about what to run and Coach Gibbs thought we had the best chance of getting the option to make a first down. We knew they were coming with pressure. Hobby makes a nice run down to the three-yard line. We hand it off a couple of times to Joyce Peoples. <coughs> Get it down to the one, and then Clayton Buford is going to take it in from there. Hand off again to George. They're a good Georgia, defensive team. Georgia hadn't had but one touchdown scored on, on the ground, I think, something like that. And here's Clayton Buford running the same little sweep into the end zone for the touchdown. And we'll see it again from ground level. Georgia's defense is designed to give but not break, and the closer you get to the goal line, the more pressure they apply. And 
Got it in. We didn't punt the ball but three times yesterday, and uh, offense moved the ball you know, all day long, Phil. It was just a matter of turning it over three times and actually set up two Georgia touchdowns, and the other turnover came came with us at their 10-yard line and, and killed a, a drive for us. And, uh, you know, the game was just that close. And that against against a football team of caliber of Georgia, you can't have those those kind of things happen to you. And, of course, Georgia is a – is an outstanding offensive football team that uh, has a senior quarterback and you know great skilled people and uh, they didn't turn the football over like they had it uh, in several games this year. And, Not while it really mattered. And uh, of course we you know that that comes from playing defense too. We just really we really didn't force anything. They, I think they had one fumble that on a pitch out to Herschel on the option where he fumbled it out of bounds. We didn't get the ball, so we. Uh, that's the way the game went. Georgia was a, a, a little more perfect than we were. I don't think they played any harder. Uh, I think they probably got more football players, more talented players. But uh, you know, I can't. Uh, I'm just as proud of our kids for staying in there and fighting them, and coming back in the fourth quarter and getting one in there and, <coughs> and played the way we played all year long. Phil, I'd like to uh, thank our fans for putting up with my bronchitis or whatever I've got. I've had it for a month, I guess. Well, you got an off week. Maybe you can get over it. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess i got to go to the doctor. I've been putting it off. I may have time to do it now. Okay. We'll return in just a minute. Next week, by the way, we won't be on that week. We'll be back in two weeks. But, Coach, uh, Auburn has not been on national television uh, since Georgia Tech of 1978. Well, Phil, I think uh, the fact of being on television and things around in the game is going to make it a very exciting game for our people. And our players, and, and uh, I know they'll be ready to play. Uh, Alabama is, I think, probably got more ability and more talent than any football team in the, in the conference. Uh, Georgia had some great players at, at uh, several positions. Some of their places are not near as strong as Alabama is. I think Alabama overall is going to be by far the strongest defensive football team we played all year long, maybe the exception of Nebraska. Nebraska was awful physical defensively. Uh, Alabama's got more running backs than anybody in America, and, and uh, they're playing three or four quarterbacks, whatever they need to play. They've got two great split receivers. The tight end crowd is outstanding player. The offensive line is big and strong and coming off of football right now. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's been a it's typical Alabama football team. Coach Bryant's done a great job of bringing them along, and he had some you know early lapses early in the year, but he's done a super job of bringing them back and keeping them involved and getting better and improving each week. And, the layoff before the Miss, uh, Penn State game, and now they've got another extra week here. They'll have all the people healthy, and they'll be a great football. They may be the best team in the country right now. Okay, and that'll be in two weeks. We'll see you then. Good luck, Coach. <laughs> been brought to you by Fought a good fight. I don't think there's any question about that. I think you just played a lot of class. Against a good football team. I feel mighty bad for you seniors. You just played a lot of class this year. <laughs> One thing I'd like to leave with you <coughs> is that 
you didn't get the full benefit. It might have been coming your way for doing what you did. But don't ever doubt the things that we've talked and preached all year long will win. Now, you younger players, the sophomores, the freshmen, the juniors, you'll be here to witness it and be a part of it. But you seniors, you think back on it. Don't ever forget about it because it'll win. <laughs> Not just in football. I ain't talking about football. Here. I'm talking about in life. Proud to be associated with you. It's tough that you're men and just keep getting up. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Boyd Nick is fast to Red Phillips. Is good for the touchdown. The 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Tucker Fredrickson. Sullivan to throw. Straight back in the pocket. Throws it for Beasley. He's got it in the open. At the 20. Touchdown, Auburn. It is blocked. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review, an Alabama victory yesterday, Coach Pat Dye, but uh, the national television audience saw themselves a contest. Well, it was a, a hard-fought game on both sides. I, I knew that our kids were going to be ready to play, and I knew Coach Brown would have his people ready to play, and uh, both sides were, and, you know, we've made a strong run at them, and uh, they got the two touchdowns in the last half of the fourth quarter that took us out of it. We... Uh, you know, early in the game, we had a chance to put it away, and we didn't. I say put it away. Certainly should have got a comfortable lead to where we might could have forced Alabama to do some things that they didn't want to do. Uh, our kicking game hurt us very badly. First half, we got, I guess, what, we missed two field goals and uh, missed two field goals, fumbled a snap, and, uh, and uh, had a pass intercepted in the end zone in the first half alone. That's, you can't beat a good football team and do those things. So, uh, but Alabama deserves all the credit. Congratulate Coach Bryant and his squad. They did what they had to do. Uh, of course, nobody in the world deserves a record any more than Coach Bryant does. He has meant so much to so many people and so much to the game of uh, college football. He has meant a lot to me in my life. They've got a great program at Alabama, and uh, he's set most, most of that record, you know, in the years that he's been at Alabama. And he's done it with Alabama kids and Alabama players, and uh, he's got the same kind of program at Alabama right now that we're going to have at Auburn in the future. And uh, that's a good one. <laughs> All right, Coach. Now, there are 11 seniors on this team. Uh, we'll begin as we talk to them with Mike Shirey, who you'll remember was declared ineligible at the beginning of the year because he'd played in a couple of JV games, uh, the era discovered in time. And so we begin with Mike Shirey. Well, I've just been staying as close to the team as I could, can and I've been working with the centers a little bit and telling them what little I know, you know, trying to help them along, mainly just staying close to Auburn football. Okay. Would you like to play professionally now? Yes, sir. I sure would like to get a, you know, just that one shot as maybe as a free agent to, to play. But it's, you're right, it's, it's disappointing today, and it's especially disappointing when you know you didn't do your job like I, I didn't do my job today. I think, I think you're going to get a chance to play again, and, and uh, we're going to enjoy watching you. We've enjoyed it these four years, guys. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Good luck in pro. Yes, sir. Football, it's, you know, it's a great way of life. I enjoy it, so if well, I can do it, you know, I'm going to try it. We've enjoyed watching you. Well, I've enjoyed being Thank here. Thank you. All right. It was not to be today, my man, but there have been some good Saturdays for you. What you do you work? You're going to work on your degree now, Charles? Oh yeah, I'm gonna try to go ahead and get my degree and uh, just give of education and uh, you know and hope to get a good job somewhere. Uh, coach Bear Bryant, you know, great coach and all, and uh, just didn't work out for us today. I guess you had the best game you ever played today, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say that. And I give all my credit to my offensive line and blocking behind. I mean, 
running behind the blocks of my running backs also, you know. Do you think you learned something about yourself this year? Yes, sir. I think I have. So I had to come a long ways from adversity. And it's something, you know, I made up my mind early in the year that I was going to come back, you know. Despite my shoulder injury and other things, I still have faith. Coach Dodds, you know, put, presented a real good work ethic to us and uh, something with his lifestyle, a pattern to follow. And uh, I've just been proud to be around him and his coaching staff. So you came on back and you and you helped the team some. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Well, I, you know, I, I really wanted to come back, and I think it's been a great experience coming back playing for Auburn again. You going to work and get your degree? Yes, I'm going to do that. That's the main reason I came back. I think Auburn people are great, though. I mean, they accept you. It doesn't matter if you're from Tuscaloosa. <laughs> I mean, if you're Auburn, you're Auburn, and, and that's great. That's that's a good compliment. And you got people going 100% all the time, and, uh, yeah, that's all you can ask for. And uh, Coach Dye's gotten that out of everybody, and uh, that's a tribute to him and the type of players he's got here. I really feel that this team, in the years to come, they're going to be a great team because, you know, they got a great coach, you know. Coach Dye, he's really, he is a great man. Hardly breathe in there, Coach. It was so exciting. Oh, it was a great day for football, and that's what, uh, you know, it's the first time I've been back here since 1973, and, uh, you know, there's a, just a great atmosphere at the Auburn, Alabama. Start right off, we kick off to them, and there's Dennis Kyle, you're making the tackle, and along with Johnny Cheeks, and I, th I you know, I think our front Defensive front just played tremendous yesterday. You can just look at Edmund Nelson and Dow Altman and Donnie Humphrey just continuously around the ball as Dow Altman making the play on a, on a draw play with Danny Skutak. This is the first punt of the game, and we have a great run back here by Chuck Clanton. We well, had some big plays. But... Great blocks right here. I can't see. I think this is Danny Skutak getting two, and as uh, uh, Jeff Jackson and this is a super return. Chuck, Chuck Clinton is going to be a great football player. You know, we moved into his secondary late in the, the uh, season. I say late in the season after about our fourth ball game. And, uh, really did not get sound back there, but he's made some great plays on all the specialty teams, and, and uh, I just think he's got a terrific career as a defensive back. Hand it off to George, people. We, we in scoring position now, I think, inside the 10-yard line. 13-yard line. We didn't get this one in, and, of course, it was a big, big, series for Alabama and keeping us off the scoreboard because we end up missing a field goal that was very critical. You just need to, you know, here you just need to have enough muscle and and to to get it in there. When you got four downs to get it in the end zone, you just need to be able to get it in there. And of course we didn't. And the official said the ball went right across the upright, right across the, the crossbar and uh, the upright and fine play by Edmund Nelson. <laughs> And uh, he said it's got to be clearly inside for it to be good. Here's the first big play of the ball game for Alabama. They come out on a counter option, and uh, they had run this quite effectively against Penn State, and we had worked on it, but we didn't get the defense executed, and Gray runs 63 yards and sets up our first touchdown. Come back and just a simple play inside, and we get good penetration, and they pick up two or three yards. Again on the option, pitch back to... I guess for Ruth and right. stop him at the one and Grace Grace scores on the next play on quarterback sneak. Didn't look like he got in out of me, but the official's <laughs> a lot closer to it than I was. He's a little biased, Coach. <coughs> okay, we're two we, series away now. We come back and make an adjustment on the on the option play that um, his great pressure and we had the corner blitz on. David King's back there with pressure, and Lewis slips down. Big play on third down for him. They have to punt, come back, and someone's kicked the ball, I think, for a 45-yard average, but he didn't get a lot of height on the ball. That's the reason we were able to, to get some pretty good returns on it. This is a third down seven play coming right here. This is Ken Hobby throwing a screen back to Ed West, and Ed West makes it as a good block by Keith Euchre. Phil, I think our offensive line came off the ball real well yesterday. And in fact, I know they had to for George people to gain 155 yards. Another third and seven play here. You can see the pressure, and, and Joe actually completed that pass with a, somebody all over him. He is, a, I don't know who that is, 
around his leg. I guess it was Pitts, the defensive end. And Joe threw the ball actually going down. Big play to Ed West. And he takes it down to what? Uh, 18 yard. 18 line. yard line. <coughs> Believe it or not, we don't get any get any, any points on. Here's a fine run inside right in. You know, you could see like there been a late hit there. Uh, this is a interception. Trying to get the ball to Ed West on the, the ball just not quite thrown far enough. And I think he had had his man beat if it had been laid over his head. I think he'd have had a chance to make the play. But that was a big play for Alabama. Kept us out of the end zone again. And, of course, the score's 7 to nothing Alabama's way now. And that would have that would have been a mighty big play for us. Second quarter now on their next possession. Again, you can see us getting pressure to to the quarterback. I think we threw him for 51 yards and losses yesterday. And, and as Edmund Nelson on a big play, and uh, they had they had trouble protecting the passer. Is reversed to Chris Woods, and Chris picks up eight or nine yards. Ken Hobby pitching to Lionel. Lionel gets it up to around the 40-yard line. Here we come in and have another opportunity, and it's wide. Those three would see, have. Well, you have. can see we've we've had the opportunities to score 13 points, and we don't have any on the board right now. Here's Lewis. Lewis is a great, great athlete, sophomore quarterback for Alabama, and uh, he's really I felt like had more to do with winning the football game last night than any of them because he came in and, and threw the through the pass that they had to have to win the football game. Here's a great play by George Peoples, the offensive line coming off the ball, Ed West and I think David Jordan and I'm not sure who was the quarterback. <coughs> Harvey, Harvey reading, the, reading the play. Alabama had a stunt on and we caught them at, at a weak spot in their defense and George just broke it. Of course, George has got terrific speed and he just outruns them to the goal line. I think that's Castillo catching them about the 10, and George gets it on into the end zone. I feel of all of our players, I guess I'm a little more proud of George than, than anybody because he not only had injury problems this year, he, you know, he had some personal problems and different things, and he's just overcome all of them and has been a leader for us and a great player. He's a great guy, too, I tell you. It's been a pleasure. There's a big play right there by... Johnny Cheeks, super hit right here on Allen Gray by Mark Dormany. Knocks the ball loose from him. We come up with the ball. I guess Zach Hardy comes up with a fumble. You can see the defensive people around the ball. Of course, they've been swarming the ball all year long. Here, Ken Harvey pitches to Lionel. Good block by Willie Howell. Thomas Boyd runs him down. Here's a fumble on the field goal. That would have put us up 10 and 10 or 7 at half. And, of course, we come away empty-handed again. Kicking game in the close games, Coach. Well, you know, it's just uh, it's part of the game field. It's, it's just it's part of it. And, you know, it's not a lot that uh, Allen Del Greco had kicked well. You know, started off kind of slow and came on and kicked. You know, had a had a good year, and then yesterday he was just a little off. And uh, of course, uh, you know that was execution on the field goal extra point right there, just a fumble snap, and um, you know, those things you can't do. I mean, you cannot, uh, and that's coaching, and you know, that's our responsibility to see that we have that execution on the kicking game. We'll be back in just a minute. On this Auburn, Alabama day, that Dr. Hanley Funderburg, president of Auburn University, and Dr. Joab Thomas, president of the University of Alabama, talk about being on the same team of higher education. I'm Hanley Funderburg, president of Auburn University, and I'm Joab Thomas, president of the University of Alabama. When it comes to quality higher education, we're on the same team, your team, because the work of these two great universities affects your well being. Our programs in teaching, research, and public service bring enormous dividends to the people of Alabama from a very modest tax investment. Help keep us strong, and you can be assured that future generations of Alabamians will be strong. The energy for our future prosperity 
is dependent upon the mind power of our faculty and our students. Mind power, it's our greatest source of energy in Auburn at Auburn University and in Tuscaloosa at the University of Alabama. Coach, I know you've got some thank yous well, that you want uh, to Phil, I'd like to uh, thank Colonial Properties for sponsoring our show this year. I, you know, I feel good about our show. I, we've gotten certainly gotten a lot of compliments on it. I think the format of it is, has got to create a lot of interest. i also like to thank Dr. Von der Berk and the administration at Auburn and the support that they've given us throughout the year. Uh, the faculty, the students, the cheerleaders, the band, uh, all of it's part of our family, and uh, of course our coaching staff and players and the administration there and the athletic department have been very supportive, and uh, you know, I can't see anything but great things in the future, and I'm just more excited now about being a part of it than ever. Let's look at the great Auburn band before we get back to the action of the second half. Well, I, Sue says we won the halftime again yesterday. <laughs> We're undefeated if at we the can, half. If, if, we can get, uh, if we can get our football team to win in the contest, then uh, we'll have everything in order, won't we? You know, uh, the networks love a good ball game on the national broadcast. <laughs> they must have been very happy with this one yesterday because it was a contest. Well, you know, it. Uh, our band has, you, you can just feel the excitement that they create. And, uh, and I've said it before, Dr. Walls has done a tremendous job. But our cheerleaders and our student body, they are just fantastic. And uh, just to be around those Auburn students and Young people, you got to love them. This is Alabama's this is first starting, series. Starting second half now. We start right back. Mark Dominey tackling. Uh, they came back and started uh, Coley in the, in the second half, and uh, I don't know the reason for it, but they did. And of course, he takes them in. Now we get a face mask penalty here, and I don't see anybody close to the face mask. It might have been one of our defensive linemen had a hold of one of their offensive linemen's face mask or something. But anyway, we get a 15-yard penalty and sets up a touchdown. Great play right here. On Alabama's part, execution to perfection. Uh, Coley pitches to Bendros on the on the Utah, the Whoopie, or uh, whatever you might want to call it. Phil, you know the game was fought in the trenches and all kind of strategy and all kind of everything done, but the difference in the ball game was that world-class sprinter right there. Yeah. Uh, that play right there and one for the touchdown was the difference in the game. Right. And, uh, you know, that's just pure speed and pure ability. And, uh, you know, he was on Alabama's side. Here comes the he kicking game. <laughs> again, they fumble. Now, you're going to see a great play right here by Chuck Clinton. He tries to pick the ball up. He gives it a little help, picks it up again, gets it again. <laughs> He's still trying to pick it up and finally falls on it at the one-yard line or the two-yard that was a terrific play. <coughs> he learned that from, I guess, Coach Wallace. <laughs> uh, we run inside the first time. The next time, of course, Alabama does a great job with goal line defense. and uh, Pitch it outside. Great block right there by George Peoples and, and Willie Howell. And Lionel James takes it into the end zone for the touchdown. And Del Greco comes in and kicks an extra point, ties the game 14-14. And we, you know, we're right in the middle of it again. And of course, that's a great play right by Ben Thomas and uh, Ronnie Ballou and just a host of all of you. Just a great lick right here. Boy, what? Greg Tut hit Coley, and I think that stopped him for the day. Great run inside by George Peoples. And again, when you gain a yardage inside, your offensive line doing a good job coming off the ball. And we're going deep here, trying to to get the touchdown. He was open too. Just He's open, and and uh, Ken didn't have a good day throwing the ball yesterday. So they're going they're the other way at their the 35. Here's a big freshman fullback, Moore. It's going to be a great player. Already is a great player, but he's big and strong and. And uh, I, he's actually Simon starts, but Moore's the one that plays in the games, and he's a freshman. We got to look at him for three more years. Running inside, and and uh, again, you know, they're not getting much running straight at us. They're just kind of hunting and pecking. And here comes a turnover. Here's a big play 
I believe Dennis Collier makes a hit on the football right there and it gets loose from him. And I think uh, Tim Drinkard recovered the football. It was either Tim Drinkard or Bob Harris won it. Here, George People runs inside for about five yards. At the 38 yard line. His pitch was a little bit high, but I look like we should have fielded that one. We juggled the pitch and no gain. We have to punt the football. Here again, we get a big break on the kicking game. Jones fumbles it, and I'm not sure who uh, recovered it, but we got enough there. Somebody from Auburn got it. <laughs> Here we're throwing. Nice play by Ken Hobby, throwing back to Tommy Carroll. Got the ball in excellent field position now. George Peoples, nice run on just a misdirection handoff. Fourth, Fourth quarter. quarter. We got the ball on the move. Joe Sullivan comes in with alternating quarterbacks, hits Lionel James. Board gets called for a face mask there, and we get the ball down in good field position. 13 yard line. Nice play right here by. Thought he could have scored inside, Coach. <coughs> well, he might could have, but you know, you get on the corner out there, and those freshmen, they, they, they just got to look at it a lot of times. And uh, I hope that, uh, you know, that we'll get better with our execution in the future. But we get, the, we get the field goal and go ahead and actually got enough points to win with now. And Alabama, you got to give them credit. They come back, have a nice play there. Hand off to Moore again. Good hit by David King. Fine play right there by Ben Thomas. Third and six coming Edmund here. Nelson. This was a big play where it stopped them but get the holding penalty. Well, this is a... Big play, and of course, Lewis has got, look, he's strong, he's quick, and he's just a good football player. You get enough people out there and make the play on him. One of our defensive backs is caught for holding, and he was holding, I was looking right at him. And the next play, they come out and hit Bendros on the, just a post route. They had set it up, running a corner, running a corner, and he came back and he faked a corner and got back inside of our free safety. Beat him for the touchdown, and of course Alabama comes back, and we're in pressure defense, and they break two sweeps from, I think, Patrick has two runs and gets it in the end zone, and we get it back down and have a pass intercepted, I guess, in the last 30 seconds of the game, and that's, that's history. Okay, we'll return in just a minute. Good beginning. I think Auburn fans can't wait for next year. Well, the most uh, important part of our season is coming up, and that's the next 10 weeks in recruiting. It's, uh, we've got to have a great year. There's a lot of good football players and uh, we don't want to get them all. We just want to get our share. So mamas and daddies will be in your homes trying to sell you on coming to Auburn. We'll see you next year on the Auburn Football Review. Football Review with Coach Pat Dye has been brought to you by The Colonial Company.